This is the Jake Podcast. JakePodcast.com. YouTube.com. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? We had a nice little... Too bad we didn't record everything that was going on there, but... Just now. But, yeah, there we go. So, uh, I wanted to get into a, uh, into a couple things, and it's funny because you and I, you were reacquainting ourselves we're getting yeah. to know each other again you know again so it's been a couple years um this weekend uh you know generally monday you know monday obviously yeah i don't do a podcast generally on saturday or sunday sure. so today's the hey how was your weekend or like, whatever what the hell happened now i had a i had a really cool we went to the uh the triple g um canelo alvarez fight where'd you go uh went to subies down river because uh-huh, i'm an adult I've been there. I like my boobs and I like my beer. I, so, amen. I like to smush them together. Yes. Yes, I do. I think there was well, some I, smushing. You could smush. Yeah. Oh, I no, no, no. Uh, actually I didn't do any smushing there. No. I didn't do any smushing all night, which will play into the blue balls comment that you oh. had a little while ago that Hints. Yeah. Blue balls. Shenanigans. Yeah. Hashtag blue balls. There will be a blue ball talk, which I haven't had happen. And I took, <laughs> I took a supplement that uh, you know a great vitamin. Supplement. It's actually uh, Crown of King. It's a it's a product that we created in Dallas, Texas, a couple years ago. You know, you go in the gas station, they got dick pills. I thought you could say Viagra. But no, no, no. Ahead. I'm an herbalist, right? I'm a I'm a I'm, I'm a, a nature boy. You know, tree hugger. Yes, I actually am. Right? I don't hunt. I I feed squirrels. I do whatever. I see your nature. Walk. I post. I post. I the, see the walks all the time. I I really do. It would be like if my dog had horns and somebody shot it, I would lose my mind. <laughs> Right? Why would your dog have horns? I don't know. That's a deer to me. Is a dog with horns, right? And I know everybody else seems to think that you know <laughs> gingers have no souls and deer, but I've seen deer do really cool shit on right. Facebook and whatever. And, your and dog I'm like, does the same thing. Yeah, my, yeah, give my dog horns, right? That'd be awesome. So, as uh, we went to the you know the Alvarez uh, you know Triple G fight, sure. um, and I told you I did a show with uh, with the you know the the vapor kid who was in here he mm-hmm. never watched anything and i forget in the getting to know you phase that you boxed also right, right? right that right, you had yeah. messed around at cronk and whatever right, right so you know we went through and i forced him to watch and it was good because it was a it's something i do before a fight right when i when i really want to wrap my mind around it and look at at uh all their highlights you know it'll it'll do snippets of highlights from them coming up like you know alvarez has, has had 40 some fights sure. right he's young little bio and, and triple g like 30 36 or 35 fights so they go through and i i watch and i'm like man he's really good with this and that and if he does this and i try and wrap my head around the whole scenario um the fight ended up coming coming out to being a draw sure um i don't know you you said you watched it also i w- i watched part of it i didn't watch the you know i was just snippets you know? and the weird part it was it was very mayweather-esque that alvarez and it was it was kind of you know from a from a boxing purist standpoint looking at his head movement his footwork he was dodging punches the you know throwing and triple g couldn't hit him and couldn't get clean and triple g was coming at him like the terminator yeah and what do you what does anyone think in boxing you're not going to be able to keep that up for you know for 10 rounds yeah 10 right. 12 rounds oh yeah yeah he dude I don't know what he does for conditioning or whatever, like, crazy little, you know, nook and cranny country he comes from. Because I remember on the bio, it's like, you know, it starts with a K, but it's not a, a Kazakhstan or whatever. It's just like, right, right? Right, right, Dude, he's 35 years old, and his cardio is insane. Unless, unless he did the Rocky cardio system with the log in the snow. In it, the, remember? It, yeah, that's right. That, and over there, it could be snowing on that side of the. I'm just saying, you know, there's that possibility of the Rocky. Yeah, because workout. Rocky, he had a lot of wind. You remember that? I do. Oh, come on, with the thing pulling and, the chains and the. What, didn't he pull a car in the snow or something, or pull the car out of the yeah, snow? Yeah, he or pulled all like kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, logs. Yeah, and then they had the two the, Russian the, guys the, that in the, the in, in the, the Mercedes. Car, yeah, and they crashed. And yeah, they, they were trip. pissed because they. And he's little, running through the snow yeah, and fast a, with a babushka on and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So all I know is hit. It was amazing because he. He put the pressure on. He went after it. He did X, Y, and Z. I was like, there's no way. I was like, okay, so he's doing a Mayweather, right? Sure. He's doing a Mayweather. He's going to – He and he was backpedaling the whole fight. But I could identify that, that Alvarez was getting tired. And, mm-hmm. you know, Mexican fighters are known for putting their gloves on the front, leaning against one another, and just beating each other senseless. Right. Those two combined have more body punch knockouts than any two fighters I think you could pair against no one sure. other. They're both – they have an excellent – and. Alvarez went to the body. He he went to the body, and you could see he was hitting Triple G. He was you know he was he was doing work, and I guess the only 
the only you know part that didn't happen was his cardio didn't end right he never got tired never got winded huh? and alvarez you know his punches they weren't crisp he was throwing them you know whatever and i think triple g hit him a couple times and did you know maybe you know maybe knock a tooth loose because right. there were things that i saw in there that were not typical and i've been watching alvarez has been on every undercard God, since like 2005, 2006, or 2006 ish. Right. So I've watched that kid when, he, and he's a redheaded Mexican, right? That's sure. that's unicornish, right? Very. And I always like to go, ha ha, that's a better looking version of me when I was his age, <laughs> right? Because he's gingery as could be. We do. Somebody at the bar was like, dude, that looks like you if you were younger. And I was like, <laughs> I know, right? <clears throat> so we go through we go through that, and it ended in you know. For anyone, you know, we did do a recap on what we thought, or a, a pre-fight show. But when you have multiple title holders or you're fighting someone for the belt, you have to beat them definitively. The bad thing was nobody beat the other one definitively. Right. If anything, dude, not a whole lot of punches were landed, like power punches. And it was really... More technical strikes. It was more technical. I mean, for right. me, dude, I my nipples were hard, yeah. right? right? And it wasn't just because the air conditioning was low and there was stripper perfume everywhere. Sure. It was. It had a lot to do with that. So it ended up, you know, going to a draw. Now everything I'm seeing online, there's one of the uh, one of the judges that judged it like Carnello, uh, 118 to 113, which is an absurd score. There's no way you could have physically watched that fight and had that same outcome. and had that same outcome. Sure. Which did cause the draw. Now it would have been it would have been a little easier to believe if it was a 115, 113, or 114, 113. 118. Yeah, 118, 113. That's a big margin. It is a huge margin for everyone else that watched the fight. Yeah, it was mm. a stretch. So people are calling, like all over uh, Instagram, Twitter, and whatever, they're calling for that judge, like calling for his head. Like, you should not be judging. Because you didn't see what you we didn't saw. See. Yeah, well, you, on... you didn't see what everybody else saw. Right. Which is kind of which is kind of hard. There's a whole bunch of people in that stadium. Nobody saw it that way. Right. So. That was kind of a thing. Now, the bad thing about boxing, right? Now, I I love boxing. I'm a purist. Everyone, oh, the, that was a fix, or you know, they've already had they had a trilogy of fights already set up before that one, so it was predetermined, right? So if you go into astrophysics, they also believe now there's certain theories out there that everything's predetermined, anyways, sure. or whatever. But you'd have to be pretty, you know, presumptuous to assume that you know that first fight was going to end in a draw. Sure, right. <clears throat> so so that happened. Um, we uh I went out with Greco, right? I went out with oh. Greco. Had a had a cool young lady that uh ironically ended up I t- I called her my unofficial Uber driver, right? So when we left, nobody was too upset or too whatever. Everyone knew it was a good fight. Right. So we left there and went to the landing strip. Okay. So I'll go into blue balls right away, sure. you know, right off the right, right off the wrap. But um we so we go there. Greco decides to leave with my other buddy. Right, because he had to stop somewhere real quick. He was, you know, at, on the way to the landing strip. Yeah, from Subi. From Subi's, right. Okay. So we're leaving with just enough time to go. Now I would have been completely cool with staying where I was at. Sure. But the young lady that was nice enough to drive us, she's a good, you know, good chick friend of mine. Never messed around. Never did whatever. I'm sure at some point in my drunken stupor, I was like, hey, hey, rah. what's up, baby? It just always ends up to you know, headlock and noogie. You know, right. the next day. Right. Right. So it's cool. She's a cool chick. I, dude, a lot of fun to be around. So we drive back. So we get there. The landing strip is packed. Just people everywhere. And I was like, holy crap. Really? You know, when wintertime is strip club season. For sure. You know, so now everyone's got kids back in school, done whatever. They've had to, they couldn't go out and do anything during the week. Nah, we'll go to the strip club. So it sure. was packed. Okay. So there is, and, you know, there's been a, 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 a reoccurring theme of midgets, right? Or little people or whatever. I don't know what the PC thing is to be called. But this is a extremely pretty hot black girl midget midget qualified as a midget or just a short person no 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 she ain't short she a midget with heels she's short homeboy oh boy and i i saw her once before but because i do date there right and i have a girl uh, maybe a girl at one time or another that i'm talking to or doing whatever makes it very hard for me to get way too friendly with anyone else right so i'll keep in line so i'm like oh all right, this is neat. And the girl that I just kind of stopped talking to was there also. So I guess I had had just enough to drink and just enough to, nah, I'm feeling froggy, right? And I went, I, I, I always carry, I told you about Crown of King. It's a product that we produce in Dallas, Texas. Um, it's basically herbal ingredients, 
that are, you know, size, stamina, and whatever. It's things that you used to see on, like, late-night infomercials and whatever. Jesus. Stamina RX. And all I know is those things were all, like, snake oil. Okay? Right, right, but right. I will tell you, this stuff isn't. Right? This should be called vitamin D. Right? Like, yeah. dude, throw Centrum out the, out the window. All your little multivitamins. That one, if you're looking for results from a vitamin, that son of a gun. Dude crazy town and i'll i'll explain a little I'll to, bit i'll have to try it yeah dude it's yeah don't tell the don't tell the you know just be like oh my god i've missed you a lot this week and whatever and then oh believe me it's noticeable <laughs> it's just what in the who are who, you who are you yeah i've uh, the testimonials that i've had from it and it, it'd be different if it was a new product i've sure. known of it and my guys in texas my business partner is the one who you know got into the business of making sure. it and it's under the umbrella of my old company so i still have a kinship for it nice. right so so I was like, you know what? Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm going to, you know, I'm probably going to mess with my, my old chick. And Summer. I got like three or four other girls there that are, you know, potential they, they've been drinking. And I was like, you know what? Jakey's cranking something tonight. And this is where I don't like doing the Babe Ruth call. Like, ah, I'm going to do something. You, you point them out and like yeah, home run. That's it. Yep. Uh, here goes one. I'm putting it over the right field fence. Not a good idea because I'd been drinking a little bit, but this, when you're drinking is amazing. Don't know if the, if the, if it says you're supposed to do it when you are or not. All I know is it makes everything work wonderful. I could be passed out. Just send people over, ride me like a my little ride my little pony, you know, ride or that that right, penny right. that penny horse right, outside right. of Kmart back in the day. Dude, I can be dead nuts asleep. Right. Go ahead, knock yourself out. So I come up with the harebrained idea at like one o'clock, like, nah, I'm gonna do something. And if I do get a dance, if I do get this little person or whatever, she's gonna be surprised because um Jake's gonna, Jake's, uh, Jake's home. Uh, Jake's I'm gonna, awake. You're going to be like, holy crap, that is a hammer. Why is that like, you know, you are, yeah, you're leaving an impression, sir, right? So I'm like, okay, so I take this, right? And it's not a drug. It's herbal, you know, Fitness. vitamin stuff, whatever. Yeah. The shit's amazing. So I take the doggone thing, right? Crown of King. Take it. So I'm sitting there and I talk to the little person. I, she came by and she goes, oh, do you get dances? And I was like, not normally, but I would like to get dances with you. I was like, truthfully, I had mentioned to Mike, like, next time you work, like, let me know. I was like, dude, you are the cutest thing on the planet. And she was like, yeah, when, you know, I'm little and whatever. I was like, oh, sister, no. I can, I can, I can see that. Like, yes. I was like, I don't know, man. I, I was like, you're cute. You're fucking unique as balls. This is this is amazing. Like right, I really right, want right. And she was like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna go um over here." I was like, "Yes, just make sure you get back to me." And she was like, "You gonna get? You really gonna get dances?" I was like, "Sister, I'm not playing." I was like, "Bring it." Right. And I right, was right. like, "Bring it." You know, like uh, I've already taken rocket fuel. I'm <laughs> I, I'm gonna have a wiffle ball bat in a minute. Right. This thing is this is gonna be off putting when you're like, Ooh, right. I might have to stand during this dance. Right. <laughs> so, so uh. She she goes away and whatever, and then I get my chick friend who, you know, possibly moving out of town or whatever. She talks to me, and I'm like, oh, my God, you look good. now. So now I'm just amorous as all get out. Like, everyone I'm seeing, I'm like, oh. All right, right, yeah. right. Like, I don't even like you, but you know what? How about you and I go yeah, for a ride? Like, I'm looking to do something. I don't know what's happening. Something. But, yeah, the the alcohol and, you know, whatever is, is playing into their benefit because Jakey's going to do, you know, some kind of shenanigans. So, of course, all the dominoes start falling completely out of just dunk, 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 and I'm watching my fun uh, night go away. Go away. Yeah. The girl that I was dating, I was like, ah, worst case scenario, meh. I mean, she's still like, well, how come you haven't called me and this and that? And will you, and it's petty little, you know, yipper yapper, which I could have, whatever, screw that. We're going home. I'm going to, yeah, you need to be taught a lesson, right? She's still down to mess around and whatever. Right. But it's getting winter time, and I kind of want I, – I hate to sound like, you know, like a – I don't know, like a romance novel or whatever, but I'm looking for more. And if anything, I'm not really looking for more. I just want you to be at my house like three, four nights a week. Once right, a week, that's, that's too much time to give me in between. I lose interest very fast. Right. So I'm like, come on, man. You know, like just be around more. She's afraid of dogs. I have dogs. I got a Belgian Melanois Shepherd, my old school black lab. Right. And Blazer's got a dog, right? So it's like Animal Farm. Right. If you're not down with the clown, you're not like down Dr. with dogs. Paul, right? Yeah, right. You can come in. I got plenty of stuff. There's, if either you're either you're cool with it or you're not. So it's it's like one day a week, and I got to put the dogs in the other room, and then bring her in, and then do whatever. I got to lock my dogs out. So now her and I are laying in bed watching TV or doing whatever, and I hear my Scoob, you know, Scuba Fucking Steve just. Yeah, right. That's annoying, right? That breaks my concentration. I like to be focused on what right. I'm doing, not listen to my dog talk to me like Scooby Doo under right. the door. So 
it gets to a point when I'm talking with her and I just went, yeah, you know what? No, nah, go away. I was like, I'm done with this, right? I don't right. even want to. So I kind of throw away the sure thing. Oof. So now I'm like, it's all bets are on the little person. Right. Right. So I'm going to go to that weird place in my head where ah, you're a little person and everything's normal size. It's just shrinky dink. Like somebody threw you in an oven or whatever. And now sure. you're just little. So I'm waiting on that and I'm not paying attention to what time it is. And Greco never shows up. Greco and my other buddy serious? never show up. So I'm looking and I'm thinking, that's why I guess I'm thinking it's not as late as it is because right. they haven't showed up. Right. Don't know what happened to him. Still haven't called to find out. I still haven't. I mean, he did. He came back and got his truck before morning. So obviously well, somebody did. Somebody did or he's okay or whatever. So he just didn't make it back to, you know, where I was. He did call me at like four in the morning, but I was already in bed to sleep. Right. So right, I was right. like, All right. So little person. So I'm looking around and I was like, wow. And I hear last call from, hey, and these are the last dances of the evening. And I'm like, what? No. And she still hasn't come by. It hasn't come by. And I look around. I don't see her, right? She could be hiding behind something. Right. She could be somebody standing there. That Yeah, uh, the back of a chair. She could easily, you know, cloaked behind it. You don't know. So I'm like balls. So she she scampers away. So this is the funny thing about taking that little supplement. As I'm standing there, my chick friend who we have messed around but haven't and have, and it's weird. We're really good friends. I also don't want to do something when she's been drinking too much because she's drinking too much. Dude, it's guaranteed. We can mess around and do whatever. Right. But I already know how she is when she's sober. And I've listened to when she's done stuff like that and what a weird turn it takes. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, asshole, whatever. Right. Right. And I don't want to be that asshole no. that, you know, I already know. Because your friendship's somewhat kind of cool. It is. She's one of the very right. few that I would consider still a friend. But okay. oh, boy, oh boy, do I want to. Well, I mean, yeah. I'd like to, you know. We've gotten close, right? We've gotten really close. Oh, boy, fun shenanigans. So I'm standing there. So now I'm hypersexualized. I've taken the crown of king. I'm carrying a, a blackjack billy club extender in my pocket, right? And I notice it as I'm standing there, right? So I'm, so I'm standing there, and I'm like, I've got basically wood only pointing straight down, right? Right. If that's any great thing, I've got a, I've got a complete, you know, I've got a complete right, for sure. wood on, but it's just pointing it's down. downward. And that thing, I can, like, see the imprint on the inside right, of my leg. Right, the whole thing. She leans into me and goes, oh, blah, blah, blah. And at this point, I don't care. I'm like, ah. Please. Feel that. Please sister. touch it. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and I notice, and now I kind of do the creepy, because this is, you know, I wasn't, like, you know, too, too wasted, but I was like, oh. She leaned, you know, like, leaned her hip and leg, and I was like, oh. I was like, damn. I was like, well, before you retire and move away, I was like, eh. You know, and I kind of did the, like, the Zohan when he's cutting, and he was like, no, 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 buddy, come on this side. Right. And they were moving back and forth. See, she seems to be legging it, right? So I kind of whatever, and I'm like, man, I was like, you know. And now I'm and like, dude. In what's what, her reaction? She was pretty banged up, which is why I didn't try and push the issue until I got home, right? So I sit there, and I wait, and uh, my buddy Doug, you know, generally gives me a ride home, right? He's a bar back. He finishes up, gives me a ride home. So I'm like. Cool. So she leaves. I don't see the little. I could have started going through my phone Rolodex, but I hate to be that guy trying to scamper for Some action, something, right? right? But I'm just like, dude, I literally have a pointed down hard on right now. Right. And I really should do something with this. Oh, no. So I'm like, ah, balls, whatever. So I get back to my house. And I, the minute I get to my house, I'm like, Meh. you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. oh, and it wasn't Doug that gave me a ride home. It was my chick friend that was randomly going with me all over the place okay so i managed to not hit on her right i managed to not right like i'm trying to hold like the three female friend relationships right. i have you know instead of just like you know peekaboo hey look hey, at this look, think you can help her brother out what's like going on? yeah i'm not that guy i've never pulled naked man you've known people who have done the naked man scenario like, oh right? what's going on oh what do you see there so i so i get home and now i'm hungry too right and i'm like balls i'm hungry I've got a pointed down, you know, I've got a water main of a penis right, right now. And I'm right. like, what am I going to do with my life? So I immediately text my chick friend who I know she was banged up. And I'm like, screw it. I'll put the friendship on the line. Right. So I text her. I'm like, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. I, I shoot out a, a a feeler text, a feeler answer. Don't answer text. Yeah, it's always good. And I put it out there and I was half tempted to the, the ex chick or whatever that I was messing sure. with. The only bad thing is I would have to pick her up. Right, because she doesn't drive, and it's not that far, but I'm still not going to drive. But it's right? a whole process. And then, if not, I'm going to send an Uber to her house, do whatever. I'm intoxicated. I'm, I'm, my thoughts are waning at best. Right. Like, right. This seems like a good idea. Let's make a egg burrito. Hey, let's do this. 
where did my dogs go? Like, I can't hold focus. Sure. So I end up cooking up some random, you know, some random stuff. I eat it. She doesn't text me back, doesn't do whatever. I go to bed, right? So I just, I eat a bunch, lay down and go to bed. I wake up in the morning. Oh, no. Dude, I wake up and I wake up and I'm kind of hungover because I can't drink to save my soul. Like, sure. I, can, I can hang out for the night, but I feel like death the next day. Sure. So I wake up to, like, it, every funny thing you've ever seen, like, you know, where, oh, you watch sitcoms and the, the sheets popped up or whatever. Sheet is popped up. And I'm like, oi. I was like, that's crazy. I don't have to, I don't have to pee. I don't have to do whatever. And I'm like, huh, that thing will go away, right? It doesn't go away. Oh, no. Dude, I'm walking around my house. Running into stuff. And it's like a dog wagging a tail, but it's in front of me. And it's not even, like, going back to its old position where, like, a lawn dart, right? It's, it's just, just pointing down. Strong like bull. Right. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I do what any self-respecting bachelor does. I, I got to go shuck the corn. Yeah, yeah. I got to pull on this thing. Yeah, knock one off. And, dude, if I haven't mentioned, it works with stamina and longevity, by the way. I don't get any enjoyment out of that thing. If I could, if it could be two pump chump on a, a right. working it yeah. out. So I've got blue balls. I'm pulling on this thing, right? It's taking up, like, it's the whole <laughs> emphasis of my morning. And I'm just like, like, I'm almost like, I'm pouting. Like, come on. Just come on. Come on. There's no amount of like anything I can find on the magic computer porn box or right. anything Nothing will help. I the, finally uh, get it. I finally get it taken care of. Boom. It goes down. And I'm like, okay, good. I can go about the rest of my day. Now, now. it's five o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. It took a while, dude. It was well into the afternoon. <laughs> so that was a good random case of, of, Fuck. of blue balls. And and it's 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 kind of I don't know I mean it's kind of bizarre how that happened and it's funny I wouldn't have thought of that if you wouldn't have mentioned uh, you know uh, if you wouldn't have mentioned blue balls right right but we got into guys getting in trouble relationship I accidentally banged this girl I was dating I mean we weren't really serious but we were dating but I kind of messed around with her sister or cousin right. or whatever right sure you had mentioned of course it would never be you to do such a thing but you had mentioned other stories of individuals where yes. this had happened to yes i had gone into a couple where i've been accused of doing stuff and i haven't actually done it right right believe me and when it when it's a friend or somebody i know or whatever i mean we've all done that one but i think you learn from what we're like you accidentally bang your buddy's sister right right, right. Where or mom. i did or mom. i've never done a, a buddy's mom I've had a couple buddies with hot moms. I've never done the oh, hot yeah. moms. Oh, balls. I never, I never, I never got that. But that was never on my overall bucket list. No. But in hindsight, yeah. Now that you mention it, I may still have some of that stuff you, coursing through my veins. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's only been a couple days. <laughs> Whose mom can I call? Yeah. Oh, it's the, it's the. What was it? Um, uh, what was Carol Brady? It's a Carol Brady factor. Oh, the yeah. the Brady Bunch mom. Right, right. Right. Yeah. I know there were a bunch of weird things, and I remember seeing like. YouTube videos of people I, trying to bang. I know me and the Greek have always wanted to trade sisters. You always heard of that story where we always want to trade sisters. Yeah. Let's just say I've I've not done sister trading, but I I've, I've I've made a faux pas once with a sister and right. almost with another. Ah. But I backed out of the almost with another. And I did it in the most horrible fashion, young guy fashion, right. you know, whatever. The worst that you could probably end it. Because it's really hard to be that good of friends with people and be around and whatever. And there's something, and I've, I've factored it down to whether it's chicks you meet at the bar or girls that work at a bar or whatever. The more comfortable you are with someone, the closer you are to shenanigans. Right? Oh, for sure. Because it's, it's easier to that open up and talk. Right. You get to know them. You do whatever. Heaven forbid, a couple sodas. They're having oh, a bad yeah. day. Do I've always had a crush on you. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Right. You know the end of, end of story. You know the thing, right? right. So uh, I did run into um, I did run into this uh, on online today with Mr. Goody Two Shoes, right? He's an actor. He's a good guy. Kevin Hart, right? Right. Um, Kevin Hart, I guess, got in trouble for accidentally uh, or there was a i guess he got caught cheating infidelity sure right? now he left uh like hollywood gave him a big i don't know they gave him a, a hard time because he was the classic like the girl you were with until you made it big and then divorced her and got with the the classic hollywood wife. yeah the celebrity so wife, you left right, your right. normal one to get with something that obviously is just amazing looking sure. his new wife is pretty hot right? right 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 so uh i guess you know he got caught um in a in a whole it's a thing if you get a chance to go look at it it was a whole um 
like uh, like blackmail thing. Like they were trying to to hit him up for, for yeah a million or I two. Heard about that, yeah. that if not, we're going to release this. That you and I had you know had done whatever, and he had played along for a long period of time. But it finally you know made its way to the Where light. He's like, fuck it, I had enough. Which it's it's funny when people ask about podcasting and whatever. Now you, I don't know your situation. You seem to have a good life. I'm not going to ask you to bear your soul nearly as much <laughs> as I'm going to. I just talked about the girl. I almost did whatever. I rubbed my I rubbed my package on my um, chick friend and, yeah. and, and tried to bang a midget. That's right? right. That's my life. Right. Exactly. I don't have any other. Believe me, if that's what I'm saying, imagine what I would be trying to, you know, like, oh, I don't want to go too far out there. So whatever. Right. So just imagine what else is in my Pandora's oh. box. Oh, I, I could just imagine. <laughs> so, well, actually, I probably know. Yeah, you some probably. Of them. You probably. Right. Know. That's good. But uh, so Kevin Hart, he, you know, and I guess he finally came out and said, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not going to sit up here and say uh, I'm not going to sit up here and say that I am or claim in any other way, shape or form. Kevin Hart publicly apologizes to his wife and children after woman threatens to release sexually suggestive video. Right. Right. So what I don't understand. Right. And, it, and it's funny because I've never really been like a cheater or. Sure. I've never, you know, dude, red hair, freckles, whatever. Dude, I was happy if I got one girl, right? Sure. I almost had the ability to mess with my chick's sister, who I kind of, in hindsight, like as a human being, she was a better human being. She was nice and sweet and whatever. And there were times where she was hitting on me, like randomly, or not even hitting, but we'd be laying there watching TV. She'd flop her legs over on me. Right. Now, I'm generally not one to to be a space invader, Right, you know, because I've seen how that works. Right, the legs are over, then a, a little curl and cuddle and whatever, right. and things like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go here or whatever. My girl couldn't go. Oh well, you know, go with my sister or whatever, and this and that. She wants to go, and I'm like, okay, cool, and, you know. And of course, joking around, I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm like, man, you don't want to go with me. I was like, that's like that's the equivalent. I gotta come pick you up and go do whatever. That's like being on a date. Right. I was like, I'm not like the rest of these guys. I'm looking for some action, you know. Ha ha ha. And she was. Yeah, we, okay. we can make that happen. I went, no, no right. you know, blah, blah, blah. And then kept pressing the issue. So are we going? And I was like, oh, my God. What am I going to do if I get put in this right, situation? Right. So I did what, you know, I just went, ah, threw my hands up and ran the other way. Like, didn't right. go, didn't do whatever. And she busted my balls in a very suggestive way. Like, oh, you really should have come. You missed out on, you know, whatever. And I'm like, no. Jeez. Right? Like, I don't know how to revisit this. And if I'm with that person, I'm not going to do that, right? Just because right. it would – it seems to be shameful in a way oh for sure but i do know a lot of my guy friends that have and quite a few of them right you can we can count them on you know a very short list that were professional cheaters oh just cheating away right and i'm not going to say i never have but my relationship had had just downgraded to a point of barely standing each other if i could please like if i get out of this lease dude i'm never speaking to you again or you know, uh, it's to a point of no return, right? Like, I dude, get it. It, let me meet something, and part to, of the to get me out, right? To, yeah. Oh, amen. no, I you get know, it. Yeah. so it's still not right-ish, I guess, if you look at it. But I don't look at it the same now. Like, I've got a complete weird and zany, you know, look at relationships in general, right? Like, if I get with a girl right now, you've messed with like thirty dudes, right? You figure you're thirty-eight or thirty-five years old. You've messed with, let's just call it the same number of years you've been on the planet, right? You've sure. had sex with 30-some other guys, or let's say females, maybe 20 or whatever, whatever right. their number is. Right. Let's say I've done a little bit more than that. So when we start dating, I forgive you, female, of all the penises that have ever come into your life, right? right? right. You just immediately, you've got zero recollection because the fact that we've met and we hung out and had a couple of drinks and you laughed at my jokes, somehow I forgive you of all your transgressions that you've That's ever right. had. Right? Start, start fresh. And same thing with me, right? But let's not kid ourselves. That thing's not brand new. Right. So if, I'm, if I have the ability to forgive 34 penises, if a 35th penis came in there somehow, uh, no pun intended, if, you know, if right. it made its way in, you know, past the Guardian, right. why, like how detrimental would that be? That's one more. I could see if it was a virgin or you were the second guy she ever yeah. dated or done whatever. Now, a lot of people will look at it from a from a, you know, an egotistical standpoint or from an emotional standpoint. Sure. How could you? And and I've got a really weird, t- you know, and this is good. This is getting to know me now. No, no, you know, no. Matt from Redford. My <laughs> thing, my thing is if like it's it's the equivalent of y- 
you can no longer, now that we're together, you cannot have an orgasm outside of my presence. Right. I've been yelled at for, you know, watching porn and doing whatever. Oh, Why sure. are you doing this? And, oh, you did that. Why would you do that if you have me? I don't know. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You weren't around. And so, I got fucking right, a twitch. Yeah. Me and the tube sock got friendly, right? What right. do you want me to do? So even in that same token, I, I try and make it as an absurd argument as I possibly could that if I'm with, if I'm with you, Right. Like I could easily date. And, and OK. And I understand the variance and the levels. But I because I've had to, I could date a girl who also messes with girls without oh, a problem. Oh, right. Heart, right. You know, the weird thing, I don't even want to be involved in it. I would prefer that if you're going to have a girl's night, you go do your girl stuff. Sure. Right. Like I'll be in the room watching ESPN, listening to podcasts or whatever. Right. You go in there and do whatever. I don't really need to. I mean, maybe I'll pop my head in. Ah, Good girl. Yeah. You guys get them. Right. right? Right. Yeah, you guys wrestle around. <laughs> but if that's your thing, right? Because it goes to like unconditional love. If you sure. love somebody and you care about them, you want them to be happy. And if that's a part of their personality, that once every 90 days, they've got to go drink wine with Julie. And I'm just going to stay at Julie's because, you know, I don't want to drive home, right? Right. And if you and Julie go and per- play do college, scissors, do scissors. Yeah, you scissor yourself until right. next week, knock yourself out. Right. And the same thing, so I, I, I pose the question that let's say you're with this chick and she's your soulmate, she's everything, everything or whatever, but every 90 days, she's like, look, I love you, I want to be with you, I want to be with you forever for as long as whatever we decide to be together. But every now and again, I need to, you know, and it's not all the time, but it seems to be like every 90, 120 days, I need to go out and possibly get some strange. Right. Yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, I'd like you just as soon to go to a petting zoo, right? Or, you know, every 90 days, I've, I've got to go pet a goat or whatever. Whatever your weird thing, I'd support you either way. Right. But if that was the case, how rigid am I going to be on, no, you know, it's whatever, right? If I truly care about your happiness, because what is the other end result? No, I'm not going right. to be with you. I'm not going to be with you and blah, 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 blah. And you throw away 99% of a good person for that 1% of you know, weird uh, transgression. Right. Now look, as a guy, I can take it in my I could take it in my mindscape and go, Okay, cool. So I'll go to the strip club and get some dances and do some whatever. shenanigans right. or right, whatever. Right, right, right. And then dude, I could easily sit over eggs Benedict in the morning and hand the paper over, Oh, you want the sports section? Yeah, I'll take the entertainment. Sure. We don't need to talk about it. We don't need to do whatever. It's at this point, like at this point in my life, one more random having sex with any other person that you have it's whatever. If right. you don't want to be with me, I'll catch the drift when you no longer show up. Right. Our, our, me and the, my current girlfriend and one that's going to be forever probably, we, we have it's such a great relationship. You know, uh, if, you know, it's like, you know, if she wants to, you know, it's, it's whatever makes her happy. I mean, if, if, if there's, you know, I've learned a lot. Over these past six years, no, married, six years. Been oh, I've been, been married, yeah. and and I'm not taking away anything from that marriage. I've learned a lot from that. Um, but with 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 who I'm with now, you know, you gotta, you can't, you know, you you always, you know, can not confide, but tell her everything that you want. Tell her, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's we have a great relationship. Very open. Very, you know, you know. We, we don't hide nothing. We're very truthful. And I'll say, hey, you know, she'll say, that that chick's hot. I, I'll agree. She's hot. I mean, stuff like that. So it's it's not like, you You're know, oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta be in with the blinders on and, and only only do this and this and this. You know, you, 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 if you have an open relationship, meaning that you can express, I'm telling you, it goes a long way. It goes a long way, no, you know, and, and, and we even have a situation where when we first got together and we said, you know, if this ever goes anywhere and if you ever wanted to be with someone or cheat on me or whatever, tell me first, don't, don't be afraid because we have a connection and a relationship to understand, Hey, if shit doesn't happen or if it's not working out between us, then just tell me, Yeah, we just w- tell me we're humans. Hey, shit happens. You've, you've, you know, you've housed a lot of penis. I've, I've, <laughs> I've banged a, a, a many, a, you know, person, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like, if you get that great communication, you know, yeah, it, I, I, you know what I, you know what I do like with, uh, with, you know, obviously I deal with a lot of millennials and a lot of, sure. you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, they kind of get it. 
right? You know how everyone bags on the next generation sure. and goes, oh, you know, dude, they get it. They, I've had so many girls, that, you know, that are in here that are like, no, you know, their friend, you know, blah, 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 and see, that's why you shouldn't have a boyfriend or whatever, you know, and she's like, what? And I'm like, ah, oh, no boyfriend for you. And no, you know, I'm, you know, I'm 20, right? I, between my friends and my family and my job and school, who has time? I don't want to check in with anyone. Right. I don't want to do X, Y, and Z. The funny thing, the little girl that I stopped messing with, she says I'm too busy, right? Well, I do this. I work at my stores. Um, I deal with other, you know, endeavors that, that I deal with. But at the same time, you know, she doesn't do much, which I kind of liked, right? right? She's kind of quiet and shy and a homebody, sure. which I really, really want. Because the minute I'm not doing anything, I would just as soon do nothing right. with you. Right. Right. Amen. And that's totally cool. Like I joke around and go, ah, if I, you know, if I invite you in my house, you technically don't ever have to leave as long as you're not a jerk to me and you don't like, you know, yell and do whatever. Be nice to my animals. Dude, I'll probably never ask you to leave because I get back from a long day of doing whatever. I'd be more than happy. I'm a chatty, Kathy, talkative dude. Watch I'm, some TV and chill. Watch some TV and shenanigans, well, right? Yeah. I still have a very high sex drive. Oh, for right? sure. So, I mean, you know, one time in the morning, one time at night. Sure. If it's a weekend, I'm definitely thrown in an afternoon, right? Somewhere in there. Somewhere right. in there. So, yeah, it's it's kind of weird. So, like, with the Kevin Hart thing, it's funny. Like, people in the public eye, or even people not in the public eye, when they do stuff like that, the fact that it went on for as long as it went on, you didn't think to come clean. Like, you were going to hide it. You were possibly going to throw money at it. That's what, that's what kills me, that old school thinking of, like, own your shit. Like, I, I own my shit. But, see, I'm extremely monogamous. So... I don't really care. If I'm with a chick, dude, a million other chicks could offer to hang out and do whatever. Number two, I'm lazy, right? Right. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm active and proactive with business and with this and, you know, creative endeavors and whatever, which will make me seem more, you know. Craziness outgoing. Yeah, that sure. I am. But I really, you know, I factored out what life is. I want to get up in the morning. I want to walk my dogs. I want to go to the gym. I want to wrestle with my chick. I'm going to go to work. What you do during that time frame when I'm not around, I don't care. Right. I don't I'm not gonna ask you what you were doing. If you went out with your friends, oh, did you cheat on me? Did you meet any guys? Did you mess with chicks? I don't care what you do, as long as you're happy and if you want to be with me. The minute you don't want to be with me, just tell me. Just tell me. Just tell or me. just don't show up. Right? That's just, a good way. Right. Kind of get the get the hint. I'm I'm pretty sure you could understand that way. Yeah. Know. Oh, I've done the I've done the uh <laughs> I've done the the go out for milk and never come home. Which girls will like girls in their thirties and forties think i'm a horrible person like why didn't you call her why didn't you do whatever it's like she'll get the point we didn't we weren't on some emotional starstruck level we were just kind of dating right right and when i've told her time one time two time three and this isn't this one this is you know another one or whatever and i'm just like yeah so i'm just not answering the or i'm just not calling well you're not going to explain to her and this is why i can't date women my own age they're like dating girls we dated when we were in high school or like early mm. college, they still hold the exact same thought process. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm like, no, no I really don't. It, dude, until we've met some metaphysical, emotional starstruck level to where we, at this point, dude, it was very surface based. Like right. We have nothing a good time. Deep. Nothing deep. Nothing deep. We didn't get that, you know, that into whatever. So if we just decide, and part of it is dating on the, you know, plenty of fishes of the world and whatever. Right. Dude, I can meet a chick, date a little while. Once you realize it's whatever, dude, it's not even worthy of callback. She calls, I don't, you know, if, if I call and she doesn't return my call, she's over it. If she calls and I don't return her call, it's over it. There right. is no, it's just next. Go scroll through your box. Right. And, uh, it isn't like, oh my God, is she going to be calling me sooner? I go, oh, I'm going to wait by the phone. Is that phone? Say, hey, call my phone to see if it's even ringing. Exactly. Not happening. No. No, nowadays, shit. Swipe right, swipe left. Yeah, it's, and and that's kind of the way, you know, it, but I'm teetering on that uh, that understanding that I do want a little bit more. I want somebody oh. to hang out with. And dude, I'm I'm pretty chill. I don't argue. I don't get mad. What do I care? I get up and go to work. I come home. Hey, let's take the dog for a walk. How was your day? Right? I'll talk to you. You want to watch something to eat? You want to go wrestle? You know, right. um, watch TV, grab something to eat, do whatever, have a great day. Go do whatever it is you do. I, I Trust me, I'm there, and, and uh, she's she's changed me. She's changed, six years ago, she changed me. I mean, I'm total, you know, it's a work in progress, right? But Always. But totally the outlook on things and how I how uh, how you're supposed to act Cause with somebody. Because you, you got around quite a bit, which is weird because I never, I never saw it, right? Because you got to think, you're and I, like, friendship – when we were young, it was that whole little group of girls. That's how we met you. You were <laughs> it was at their a party. friend at one of their parties. The party. 
So the he, part, the only party. That's how we first met. That was party. that was one heck of a party. That was probably one of the parties yeah. around. Yeah, no, it was. And do you it, remember her mom and dad? Do you remember them too? I do remember. They golfed all the time. Remember, they mm-hmm. were always golfing. Yep. No, and yeah, they and you know it was and you got to think I was so Canton back then. That I guess maybe why your name was Matt from Redford. Like, right. oh my God, how. You know, how, how out of the loop am I? What that are I'm, you doing? Here? Yeah, we were hanging out with a guy from Redford, right? To get Who's some street this? cred, right? You're, you're West Detroit. With Robert Redford. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So meeting, you know, like at that party, you were hanging out with those chicks, right? And it's funny because when you when you meet people and, you know, we my buddy knew those chicks, right? So I was an outsider. You knew those chicks. We were an outsider to you, vice versa. Yeah. We kind of clicked, and then we started doing weird things. Like when we were supposed to go to those fireworks, and we didn't, and then we met up with you after the fireworks. When we were at Honey Tree Apartments. Holy shit. And you went to the fireworks, and we didn't, and then we were partying over there and whatever. So there's so many weird. Wow, I forgot about it. Yeah. Nah, that was a good <laughs> trick. You know, and you come back, where were you guys at? I thought we were supposed to be there. Ah, we didn't, whatever. What are you doing? Ah, we're doing this. Okay. We, yeah, Let's we're going to hang out over here. So, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of bizarre, but you always, and it baffled me, right? Because I never really noticed your style. I, I would run into girls that you had messed with, <laughs> right? And just like we were when we were talking offline, like, hey, you know, so, yes. it's crazy. Hey, you know this? Oh, oh, it's crazy. Oops. And I'm like, God damn. Like, what were you doing? Because I was around you. You weren't getting that much tail when we were hanging out. Neither was I. None of us right. were. Maybe it was an awkward phase for all of us or something, right? Planting the seed. And and it's kind of weird because I've done well on my own. For sure. Right? And, but not I'm not Johnny go up and pick no, up chicks. No, not like other dudes that in yeah. our age bracket where like uh, Mr. Football or, you know, the yeah. dude that with the, the blonde hair and the tall, the, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Super good looking guy. Yeah, right? that like, guy. Yeah, and those we always guys, had to work harder. Yeah, always, and that's why do we developed you know the ability to talk and talk oh, in different situations, for sure. adapt, uh, lull them into a false sense of security. I've developed many many skill sets of I'm just going to wait this other guy out. He's drinking way too heavily. <laughs> it's back to boxing. He's going to tire himself out. His punches right. are going to have no sting. I'll swoop in. I'll outlast him. Right. 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 So yeah, I mean, humor is always a good medicine. Oh, dude, too. it's it's the best. It's you the can best. get a chick to laugh. Then, oh God, uh, what did I say? Oh, get this. Okay. So when speaking of this, I go to a bar, um, uh, the US 12. Sure. Right? And I generally don't go to the 12 all that much anymore just because they don't have a very good caliber of female that I, would like, to, that I would like to get to know, right, no, when I go that's there. that's not the place where you go. Yeah, but I, I mean, al- no offense. But I also, like, Westland used to be that great, like, middle ground. Like, oh. I've got my first apartment or... I am not ready to buy a house, but I've got it. You know, it's a lot of a heart, uh, apartment housing, but I also don't like going to Uptown Plymouth either. Right, right. No, I, it's it's where you can go to the neighborhood place, but yet have a starter situation. So get this. I walk in, and I'll be doggone. There's some pretty women here. What are you, doing a benefit? Like, you, what, What's going on? Yeah, it's like pretty girl benefit or something. Like, I don't know, I don't know what brought them there, but I was just meeting a buddy of mine. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, my buddy Rashad. And I was like, ah, Rashad, he's friends. He's the US 12 group uh, from Big Rob. Big Rob, who's oh, bounced everywhere. Right, 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 right. Rashad, right. Randall, um, uh, Jeff, and all these guys, what right? Was, what, was the, what was the dude? <laughs> interrupt. What was, the, what was the, the, the black guy's name? Remember the little. Crutchfield? Or, yes. Yeah. What the hell is. is uh, just to uh, get off topic, is. Man, uh, it's when a, was the it's last really time? Bad, it's a really bad story, man. I didn't want to tell you like this. He got married. Oh boy! Yeah, got married one time. Married an picket awesome fence, white, white picket fence, dude. The chick white is, neighborhood, like of the course. Spiria Lane or something. Oh yeah, no, he's he's living super suburban, whatever. Dude, he does. He he goes. He does. You know, work and comes home and hangs out with her. They take trips. They do some stuff. He married very well. She's Where's a really live? huh? Where does he live? Uh, in Trenton. The Canton of Down River. No way. Yeah. I remember, now that was a name because you saw, you know, we were talking about, you know, obviously the real friends and people. And I'm like, wow, I haven't talked about that guy in a long time. No, he's a good dude. He was around a lot when I was uh, when I was opening the retail locations. Right, right. And he was with me. His life was a little Scar- helter, helter skelter. 
sketchy. Always no, living, no, sketchy. always living with a chick, and then when things didn't go good with the chick, the weird thing is he's completely. He's not like he was back in the old days because whether well, oh, he did well, he did really well. Right. Like, this dude did four times well at all times. Right. Like it was disturbing. Like I was like, dude, how do you have like four? Four Cutters, chicks at all times. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was the handler of women. Yeah, dude. He was all over the place. He was slick. Yeah, dude. Super slick. And yeah, and he did whatever. Now, and what's funny is I, I reconnected with him in 2009 when I was back here doing business. Okay. And yeah, no, dude. He just, he stayed at home. He's a homebody. He doesn't go out. He kids? doesn't do anything. Yeah, he's got a bunch of kids. Johnny Appleseed. Right. He's got a bunch. They're all grown and stuff now. Wow. Yeah, and he had kids a long time ago. But, uh, Anyway, so you go to US-12 so, so hot go, checks. So I go to the US-12. So I walk in, I see my buddy Rashad. I'm like, hey. So, you know, in just general bar etiquette, as, as, I'm, as I'm standing over here and I, I look and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, da, 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 I'm talking. And as I'm talking and from working and bouncing in bars and everything, I can't go to a bar and not have a, uh, Always a constant, you know, who's this, who's that, these guys here, this and this, or anybody rowdy, anybody whatever, sketchy dude. You know, whatever. These chicks are having too much fun. That guy's talking to him. He's with uh, right. That's probably. And it helps identify of who you can go oh, talk to also. Because you sure. go talk. I don't want to get in a fight with this guy because I talked to his girl. So as, uh, as I'm sitting there, really pretty blonde girl and really pretty mixed girl. And as I'm talking to Rashad, like Rashad's here, right? And as Rashad's here, uh, the bar kind of curves. And like maybe 10 spaces down on the bar right around the curve is a pretty blonde and pretty, you know, mixed girl. Right. And as I'm sitting there, I look and I said, okay, cool. And as I'm talking to Rashad, like I'm talking to you, I'm also kind of letting my eyes you're, go over his right looking shoulder. looking over him. And I'm like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's always good, like, you know, when you're smiling, right? Like, oh, I know, right, dude, where, dude, do you think Blazer's going to come, dude? There's no way he's going to get here. And as I'm, get, as I'm smiling and looking, I look over there and I see them two looking at me. Right, right. And I catch their gaze and... You know, blah, 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 continue, obviously smiling a little bit, whatever, which gives you a – it's giving off an air of confidence because I'm smiling dead that, dead nuts at their – why they're looking at sure. me in my eyes. And then I'll go back to talking to Rashad, right, because I'm not going to just go, oh, my God, oh my you're God. looking at me. <laughs> not a lot like I was last night <laughs> right, or, right, or right, right, Saturday right, night. Right. So I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm looking at him. Rashad's doing whatever. So I'm like, huh. And it happens like three or four times. They keep looking. There could be a really good-looking dude standing behind me. Yes. Right? I could have, like, male model convention behind me. I wouldn't know. All I know is I'm looking in their direction. They're looking in mine. Right. So I put it in my mental Rolodex that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and find an opening. If I happen to be over there, I'm going to, you know, try and strike up a conversation. So as the night goes on, we do a couple, couple drinks, a couple shots, whatever. I'm now feeling a bit goosey because mm. I can't drink. I swear to God, I drink, like, once every two weeks. And I'll, you know, two shots of Jameson and, like, two or three beers. And I'm not even doing the Jameson like a shot, right? I'm trying right. to be an adult. I take little sips out of it. Right, right. But, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not wasted, but I'm definitely a bit sassy, right? Sure. So I, I, I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. I end up over there by them, <clears throat> and I've got uh, Big Rob. He's, he's bounced. He bounces at Deluxe downtown. Right. Um, he's bounced at the US-12. Uh, he works with a couple municipalities and whatever. Good, good dude, but he's been in the bouncing realm. Um, I'm sure you have. He probably was bouncing there when you were when when the last few times we went through there. Because I'm de- I've, I'm a deluxe fan. I go, I know. He I think he generally works the door. He's like like six four, probably six four, and like I don't know, like close to close to three hundred pounds, like maybe two eighty, two ninety. I probably know him. I, I, you, once you're in that circle of bouncing, you know everybody. And so. he's you know he's got his uh, you know oh, CPL yeah. and whatever, right? So he's a good guy. He does private security, does all that stuff. So as I'm, uh, as I'm there, Rob's sitting there, and I went, hey, Rob, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, you think there's a whatever? And I was like, I don't know, man. I've made eye contact, whatever. I was like, I'm going to have to find a way. So I did the uh, – <coughs> as soon as, as, soon as uh, they, were, they were here, we were here, somebody got up and moved, I did the old, like, checkers, right? So I was right. like, ching right? So right. I went kitty corner. So there, but I also didn't want to just walk over and just, mm, excuse me, right? Uh-huh. I'd like to, if I can have a smooth opening, I'll oh, choose it. Yeah, you have to. But uh, as we're there, um, I'm kind of now eavesdropping because I went back to back with them. So I'm kind of right. hearing what conversation and what's going on. And, and somebody interjected and, and started talking to him that we knew. 
Um, somebody called me away. Well, Rob took it as, hey, what's going on, ladies? My friend, uh, I, I happen to be talking to somebody else at the moment, so I couldn't, like, just disengage. Right. He was like, yeah, my buddy and I, you know, uh, saw you guys. You guys, you know, obviously, this is our local hometown bar, so we know you guys aren't, you know, regulars here. But uh, my buddy and I would buy you a drink. And, oh, no, we, you know, we got to get up in the morning and whatever. And, and, and well, she's got to get up, and she's forcing me to go home, the blonde girl is saying about the other one. Now, the one that I had my eyes on, the blonde girl looked too – persnickety to begin with right she was really attractive but kind of knew it not in a cocky but a confident way sure and that's not my unless you're really into me i'm not going for you Mm. but the mixed girl she had a nice like a nice sweet quality about her right and you could you could see it or feel it from a distance so rob asked him you know and he didn't give up on the first denial right like oh no we're actually leaving and this this and this so i see i hear leaving i hear whatever and i'm like balls i've got to interject you got to get in right and i don't care that it may go somewhere it may not go somewhere but i just want to throw my two cents in and i i work really good on the you know the two minute warning right you give me the two minute warning because I really don't care. Odds are nothing's going to happen. You're not going home with us tonight. Right. Nothing's going to happen. You can but almost I'm, talk shit. And, I mean, and leave an impression. Like, who the, who the F is this guy? Right? And that was pretty fucking funny or yeah, something. Right? Yeah, right. Which, which is what I went for. I pulled the, you know, I pulled the funny guy card. Sure. Gotcha. So I hear, oh, I'm from, you know, oh, I'm from Texas and blah, blah, blah. So Rob's asking the right amount of questions. He's no rookie to being in the bar, right? Right. And he, you know, he works in bars and whatever. So he's pulling information. I'm now hearing and not paying any attention to whoever the hell I'm talking to. <laughs> right. So I'm like, hmm, yeah. As soon as their eyes went like this, I kind of just slid over and I went, Texas, huh? I was like, where, where, where at in Texas? Where you, right, you know, right, where do you right. come? And she was like, oh, like, um, like Plano Allen. And I was like, no kidding. I was like, I grew up in Garland, Plano Richardson, 75 North of 635. And she went, yeah. She was like, well, I'm actually from Idaho. But I was I was living in Texas and whatever, and I was like, well, I'm still a card carrying member. I flap out, and she was like, Oh, no kidding, Farmers Branch. I know that. Blah blah. And I was like, Yeah, Farmers Branch. Uh, you know, uh, University of North Texas, Denton. You know, up 35. And she's like, Yeah, I, yeah, I've been up in Denton and blah blah. So I'm like, No kidding. I was like, So what brings you? So I now like literally step right in front of Rob. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, like, dude, you did. You okay? You, you did your part. Now, yeah, you now. engaged. You engaged the, you know, the lineman and whatever. Now go ahead and pull away. I'm gonna try and tackle somebody. Right. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, no kidding. I was like, so what brings you? You know, what brings you here? She's like, oh, I work for a company, and you know, this, this, blah, 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 blah. And I went, oh, okay. I was like that, you know, and and Idaho and whatever. And I was like, really? I was like, Idaho. What happens in Idaho? Or is that why? And she was like, exactly. Why do you think I moved to Texas? I was like, cool. What made you move here? Now uh, I work with this chain of companies and whatever. And I was like, cool. Um, I forget what the transitional, or or it may have been just that. And I went, I waited for her to like break eye contact or look look away. And I went, awesome. I was like, I go, that's great. I go, but really, I go since the moment I walked in, I want to do, you know, I definitely want to do uh, to to say hello or you know learn more about you. I was like, what's your name? And the blonde girl went from looking away to. What? what the fuck? Did you just, like, I literally went, hey, Texas, Texas, oh, you're neat and shiny, and then went, so, what's your name? You know, I nice. from the minute I walked in today, I, I kind of wanted to, you know, look, I'm just going to throw it out there. I I noticed you the second I walked in. What's your story? Uh, you from Idaho also? And she was like, no, I'm from here. I was like, where from? Oh, Canton. And the and the and what was funny is the blonde girl went, are, are you serious? Like, did that just happen? Like, like, like she I was told, shocked that you fucking. Like, I gave her the. Fucking, <laughs> And just, cool, talk amongst yourselves. So, what's your name, and what are you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Nice. And she's kind of giggling, and her friend looked, and whatever, and I went, I was like, oh, no, no. I was like, I overheard. I was like, you're the good girl. Probably the reason why I wanted to talk to you, right? You know you got to get up in the morning. Uh, My friend Rob offered to buy you a drink. Very gallant effort, right, to just, hey, let me buy you guys a drink. I get it, but I like like where you're coming from. I go, so you're the good girl. You're in Canton. You're from Canton. I was like, before I asked her Canton, I was like, you're definitely not from around here, right? Right. Just her aura and whatever. Where are you from? She was like, oh, Canton. I was like, cool. I grew up kind of in Canton also, right? I grew up in Canton and Dallas. But that's awesome. And I was like, so, you know, you're all, you know, got to go home and, you know, <laughs> tuck yourself in and, you know, brush your hair the the proper amount of strokes and whatever. I was like, I like it. You're the good girl. And uh, and I forget. Um, And I was like, look, uh, you know, and they were talking. The blonde girl started interjecting and getting back in the conversation. So as we did, and I was like, no, no, no. I totally get it. I was like, uh, I was like, dude, I would sight unseen. I would probably marry you, right? You're a good girl. You know uh, when to go home. 
I was like, look, I know I don't have enough time. The lights are on and whatever, but no, yeah. I was like, you're a good girl. I was like, dude, come home from work. You know, let's, let's make a, you know, let's have a chicken pot pie and watch Dancing with the Stars. Got it. We'll go out and do something fun on Saturday or Sunday. And then I went right back to the blonde girl. And I was like, but you, on the other hand, let me guess, you're, I, I go, so you're new, you're new here and whatever. And she was like, you know, the, the, now the mixed girl was like, what? Oh my God. Like, who is this? Right. I heard her say over my shoulder. And I was like, now you, I was like, let me guess, you're probably not opposed to go to a gentleman's club and, you know, cause the only, you know, to go to a gentleman's club and have a good time. So are you saying I should be a stripper? And I was like, no, not at all. But you, I could tell by the way you were here and this kind of isn't your scene. This seems a little too lame or too tame for you. Right. But you, you wouldn't mind going to a, you know, going to a gentleman's club for the atmosphere and whatever. And she was like, no, you're right. I, I fucking love it, dude. That's, dude, I love going to strip clubs. It's so much fun. And I was uh, like, and she was like, the food at strip clubs. I was like, I know. The only, where, the only place on the west side to get five-star cuisine is in gentlemen's establishments. I was like, right on. I was like, I used to floor manage and, and uh, you know, basically just take care of things on the floor when both of the managers were behind whatever. But I have very good friends. I go, if you ever want to, landing strip lounge, mention, met a guy at the US-12, talks a lot, right? Kind of hair, kind of points in the front. Oh, you know Jake, come on in. Or if you ever, you know, anyone right. from Texas, if, if, you know, I always feel obliged to show people around or whatever, I go, not her cup of tea. Good. That's why I'd offer, that's why, that's why I'd marry her and whatever. And she, and she was like, chicken pot pie. She was like, would you really chicken pot pie? And she was like, well, and not dancing with the stars. And I was like, look, it was the most generic. I don't watch regular TV. So whatever happens to be, you know, must see TV, NBC right. programming. Right, right. But that's kind of your normal Monday through Thursday existence. And she went, well, kind of. And I was like, no, it's actually very attractive. Believe me, with all this going out in the world, that's yeah, attractive. That's actually attractive. Right. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> and and her friend was like, she was like, really? A chicken pot pie? Whatever. And, and she was like, well, not like one that you take out of a package. Like, have you ever had like a homemade chicken pot pie? I actually get down with that. Whatever. They both stop and they look at me. And they just, she was like, dude, this is the most random conversation in like two minutes that I've ever had right. in a bar. And they're both giggling. And I went, oh yeah. I was like, I go, look, I understand. I only had a couple minutes. Made you laugh. You'll definitely remember the end of this night, right? Because you guys are both good girls and going home. You're not that intoxicated. Not like I had a chance to go, hey, let's go back to the house and have a drink, right? And she was like, no. And I went, exactly, right? You guys got to get up for work. I go, but just so you do know, at the corner of Cherry Hill and Haggerty, I do have a retail store. You live in Canton. Stop by one day. I'd like to talk to you when I'm not really intoxicated and saying weird random things. But you got to admit, for having a couple too many drinks and whatever, that was memorable. And, right. and they just kind of went, Dude, that was the best conversation. The blonde was like, that was the best conversation I've ever had in my life. Nah. She was like, and I think there was more to it, but that's right. all I can recall right, in this right. manner. Did they come in? Um, no, I haven't. Well, also, I kind of changed the schedule and whatever. Maybe um, they will. Maybe they won't. You never know. I don't know. If but I you ever, left an impression, though. I, and look, that's all you can do. Sitting there on your hands and not doing anything. That's the worst thing. You can is do. the worst thing. Cause all You'll never know. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. See, you never know. And that's, that's exactly when you go to talk like, Making girls laugh. That's the best part. You make you get them to laugh, they 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 just they melt. You know, I've uh that's yeah, you can't just sit there and not not say anything. You gotta be productive, you gotta be forward, you can't be all shy and sit there. Just and you also there. you also can't be a creep too and her and her girlfriend and just interject and hey I mean, Hey, I'm a dick guy. Yeah, yeah, you can't be dick guy. Now, super good looking like Jersey Shore when that was in vogue, those dudes would just run up and just right in the middle, what's up and whatever. And for some reason chicks dug it. Right. And but you have to be a certain guy to with the look. With the look with and the, the whatever. Right. When all I've got is the talk and then maybe after you look at me what you know, I kinda soften a little bit like <laughs> Oh, he's not that bad, right? Right. You know, I mean, you do have sex with the lights off ninety percent of the time, right? right We're not right, porn right. stars, so yeah, I don't know, and it's a no. it's a weird thing. So I, it was good, and it just makes me happy that I found a way to interject. I made them both laugh. I'm not really interested in the blonde lady, but on the off chance the other one wasn't interested, I'd be interested in the blonde right. lady if she wanted right. me. Don't think I'd ever have like you know. I don't think I could like her as much. That girl had a weird like aura of goodness and i'm a sucker for good right, 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 right as much as i do when i'm single i'm extremely single when i'm in a relationship i'm extremely in a relationship you've seen me when well, i sure. lived at when i lived the at the landings what did i do i played madden you and i would talk on the phone i'd come over to your house you'd come over to mine we and i met madden nights and i i'd cook tuna helper with, with my chick yeah with her and those goddamn parents the things i do to make and sure parents. i have somebody to sleep with 
I had to take God the ferret, remember? We yeah. babysat the ferret. Yeah. I forget where we went or what no, we did. The but landings, because they were coming into the... Because oh, you couldn't have animals or something like that, right? So we babysat the ferret. No, we snuck a bunny in there for a while. <laughs> she was horrible. Everything she got, she ended up having to give away or get rid of. Like, dude, I'll give up a relationship, a marriage, and whatever over my dog. Like, dude, don't don't make me, you know, choose between the two of you. We already know who's gonna That's win. Funny, the fair. You've got thumbs. You can fare well out in this world. He I liked have our thumbs. I liked our where our apartment was because yeah. we were right where we could, we were the pool action. Yeah, that was a good trick. That was a good place. Yeah, I hear it's gone to hell in a handbasket. Oh, I bet. Yeah, people yeah. getting their rims stolen. Ever, ever since we moved out, it went yeah. downhill. That's right. We kind of we kept it under kept it under wraps. Oh well, yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and look, I'd advise guys that even if you don't, uh, you know, in this world, y- the easiest way, like, you know, what would have been great is if I would have had business cards on me at that at that time mm-hmm. because I was all out. And having business cards, whether you have a viable business or not, is awesome. Right. Because in that same conversation with those two that, you know, uh, you know, hey, uh, blah, 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 and be like, Blondie, if you do decide like one of these days you want to, you know, Something, Good, right. you know, something, something wild. You want to go get a, a booby and a steak? And know. I'm like, I, I don't know if you want to corrupt her or whatever because, dude, I mean, seriously. She, she goes to girl. church. She's got to go That's to church That's right. She's got to go to church or whatever. You, we don't want, I mean, the amount of time she's going to have to spend in the confession booth for being right. in that hedonistic place. But here, here's my card. If you, oh, I'm not going to call. What I, dude, look, take my card. I'm going to give them to you. I don't care if you crumple them up and throw, put them on somebody else's windshield wiper or on, out there. Or put them on your hope chest. That's right. Here is a good drink. And, I, you know, I'm going to, here, take it and take it and whatever. You know how many times I've done the, and this is before business cards. I had, a, I had another chick thing. The owner of the bar, good looking dude, and he was a police officer, right? And uh, his family owned the bar and whatever. He's there, right? And I'm like, balls, you already kind of win because you own the bar. Your parents own the bar. You're right. a, you know, an owner, and you're a good looking dude, and you're a cop. Balls, right? Those are all good things that make chicks swoon, <laughs> swoon in one way sure. or another. Well, this chick, dude, she was cool and short and had a little, like, she was wearing a sundress and a nice little sneaky body under the sundress. And, you know, I was there and I'd had the proper amount of, you know, drinks. And I was like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing? You seem kind of chilling or whatever, you know, yeah, yeah, buy you drinks. She's like, oh, I'm only 19, right? And I think I was 28 at the time. And I was like, really? I was like, I was like, so what are you doing here? Oh, I kind of know the DJ and whatever. And I was like, oh, no kidding. And I was like, so you just come and hang out and whatever. So we ended up talking randomly. Right. right. So right. we're just talking randomly. Well, the, the owner of the bar, police officer dude comes over and he's a good looking dude too. Right. He comes over and we know each other. Kind of, we played football. I played Salem. He played John Glenn. So, uh, so we knew each other and it was funny because I could see him like trying to push me out, but I wasn't giving my ground. So we right. both sat there and talked to her and then we did until it was like really coming to no avail. And as it was coming to no avail, we, uh, we kind of both left the situation and left her alone. Right, right. right. And then we talked a little bit like, oh, bro. and I'm like, come on, man, give a brother a shot and whatever. He was like, dude, I have a real job. And like, you know, all the time he was like, this is, you know, this is, this is my card. I play right. And my parents own a bar. <laughs> so we talked about it. And, uh, and I went, you know what? I was like, screw it. So I take a piece of paper, you know, write my number, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, Hey, I was like, I know, you know, you say you're not from here. She was from the East side. Like, sure. uh, whatever east side cities are over east there right Point. yeah right so she's over that away somewhere and she's like i never come out here and i never do whatever and i was like well if you're ever out here and she's like i really don't ever come out here this is the first time i've ever been out here and i was like eh. i go right i go you can sit and tell me that until the cows come home i was like i'm gonna give you my number right if you ever come out this way again and i go look you're 19 if you need to pregame or you have you know you come out you have too much fun or whatever i live like five blocks from here Right. Right. Or if you randomly your dudes playing again or whatever and you want to have a you know, you want to have a soda or whatever. And this is when I was willing to like, you know, oh, I'll let you have a have a drink or whatever. Right. Stupid. Right. You know, uh, contributing to a delinquency of a minor or whatever. But I'm like, ah, you know, you're sitting in a bar now. Right. So obviously you're you're working on it. You're aware of it. Right. And uh, and she was like, well. She was like, yeah, I, 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 she was like, wait, I could tell you could probably. And I was like, no, 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 here, take it, put it in your hand. Look at this. I'm going to put it there. I don't care if you crumple it up and throw it out the window when you're driving away, but you really shouldn't litter, right? That's really unbecoming of a young lady, right? So maybe wait until you get to the house, right? And then who knows? You may have a need. Something could come up. She was like, it probably won't. And I was like, that's good. But I'm going to know that I'm le- – I go, look, I'm doing this for me, not for you, right? I'm 100% sure you're never going to call. But I need to realize that when I see – I go, dude, you're a cool smoking – like you're – look, you're you cool. got something going on, right? It's right. cool. 
I'm going to give you – this is just practice for me. I just need to get in practice of doing this because there's an off chance that it could happen. And if it doesn't, I at least came out of my shell. I'm actually not this forward of a dude, but you're really – I mean, you're, look around here. Dude, you're neat, right? You look better than every person in this place. <laughs> the fact that you even talk to me makes me feel wonderful, right? So right. I'm going to go home feeling good about myself. Don't make me feel bad about myself, right? Right. She was like, okay, fine. And I was like, cool. High five. Right on. And she was like, really? That's it? You're not going to – I was like, dude, I'm not going to sweat you, right? Look, I'm going home. I've had way too much to drink. I just know, haha, look at what I just did. Gave her the hottest girl in joint my number. You seem neat. You're, you know, you're 19, so, yeah, I'm not going to run into you. So who knows? Right. So I'm sitting at home a couple weeks later. It's like a Friday. I'm sitting, or no, Saturday. I'm watching college football. Phone rings. I'm like, hello. They're like, hey, is this, is this Jake? I was like, yeah, it is. This is Jenny or whatever, right? Use some weird name. I don't remember her name. This is Jenny. And I was like, Jenny... Who, in effort of not sounding like Forrest Gump, like Jenny, right, I'm like uh, right. Jenny, Jenny, um, the girl from the East Side, whatever, and I'm like Jenny, right? I'm just like you, you're gonna have to refresh my memory. The girl that you gave your number and told you was never gonna call and whatever, and you probably shouldn't do whatever, and I went, ha ha. I was like, what did you find this? And the girl Jenny told you to call me because right, she's never right, gonna use right. the number. She was like, very funny. She was like, look, okay, so I know I, I told you I was never going to call and whatever, but okay. So in the last two weeks, my life has gone to hell in a handbasket, right? You know, this and this and whatever. And I just need to get away from town. And my girlfriend is going out. Uh, she lives out that way. And she was like, hey, what's going on? Are there any parties or what can we do out there? And I went, funny you ask. I'm going to, I was like, my buddy's having a party and we're, you know, we're going. And she was like, really? I was like, yeah. I'm like, she was like, was it cool? I was like, yes, it's cool. Like the universe somehow gave you, you didn't throw the paper away. Haha. <laughs> even though you said you would, right. you called, which is even more random. So yeah. And third thing, there's a party involved. And there's a party, right? Like this is the universe saying you should definitely go out, you know, go out and whatever. So for sure. She was like, what do you have some, are there going to be some, fr-? I was like, yeah, I'll make sure I've got a couple buddies with me to entertain, you know, you and your friend and whatever, but for sure. So here's my address and whatever. So I'm like, ain't that something, right? So this is kind of the reason why I've always, you know, worked on that. Just throw it out there, put it out in the universe. So she comes over and she comes over and boy, oh boy, is she even hotter than I remember her being two weeks ago. Like she's actually wearing sassy clothes, not wearing like a sundress. Dude, when I tell you the hottest young body, and this is just when I got divorced. So I'm freshly divorced and I'm like, oi. This thing is amazing. And then we'll, we'll bring up our buddy's name who starts, you know, starts with a weird capital letter, you know, QS, somewhere in that range, right? right? Right, He's going to this party, too. It was some dude we worked with at Ford Motor Company and whatever. So we were at this, uh, you know, we're at this, uh, you know, guy's party, right, in Canton, right? So I bring, you know, me, my buddy, and these two girls. So we're kind of double dating ish mm-hmm. So we go there and we hang out. I'm paying her attention, never letting her get too far away, making sure she feels comfortable. I don't want them to go, we're not having a good time, we're leaving, right? So we go there, we're having a good time. QRS comes up and goes, he was like, man, what you? What are you doing with that, man? You don't, you don't know what to do with that and whatever. And I went, I was like, are you out your mind? I know exactly what to do nah. with that. And man, I don't know, man. That, dude, you got to be kidding me, man. man I'm, I'm. And I'm like, dude, you could <laughs> stop now, right? I was like, with me. Right? right? I got this. Oh, man, you know. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, you're creeping me out. I was like, get away. You're obviously not offered into any conversations anywhere near her and I. <laughs> right? Where I normally, yeah, this is my buddy so-and-so or whatever. Right, right, right. You are not involved. You are not involved. You are not invited. So I'm like, all right, guy. So as we're, as we're doing, you know, doing this, we end up having a good time, whatever. Well, you know, she starts, you know, leaning in and holding my hand a little bit. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. We get to talk and we kiss a couple times. And I'm like, holy crap, this isn't just I'm coming to hang out. Like, she's she's going to throw down. Right. Whatever happened bad in her life, cool. It's it's made my life happier. Well, her friend is being a fucking pain in the ass. Oh, no. So I need a wingman. So my buddy that came with me, right, decided to go smoke weed with someone. He's having a goddamn panic attack. He had to leave and go sit in his car. No, I shit you not. He drove us there. He went out and sat in his car. So now I've got her going, I'm not having fun. We should go. Oh, now I'm like, it's oh, just no. all going downhill. So I look around, and I'm like, who is cool enough here? And I'm to definitely not going to be take over. QRS, right? The end of the alphabet is not getting called in on this because he. I already know he's a snake in the grass, dirt rag. 
<laughs> you're done. Alphabet. You're dead to me as far as that's <laughs> concerned, right? So I'm like, who can I, who can I? There's this dude that I know from work, right? Black dude. Cool as shit. He is east side ghetto as balls, right? He is hood as what? This dude got gunshots. He'll be like, he's got gunshots. He's like our little personal work Tupac, right? Right, right, right. He gets in trouble. He comes to work drunk. Horrible person. It, as far as a worker, I, I dig it because he's just random as shit. He's always in trouble. So I'm like, hey, I was like, yo, I was like, I was like, dude, what are you doing? He was like, nothing. I was like, man, I'm in trouble. He's like, what's the matter, man? What's going on? I was like, dude, I got it. He was like, dude, that chick you with is fine as shit, man. That is the finest little motherfucker boy. Yeah, right, 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 right. I knew you had it like that big red and whatever. And I'm like, man, I was like, but look, my fucking boy that drove us here, fucking Tim, this dude, he's having a panic attack in the car, can't do whatever. I told him, I was like, dude, you're going to have to wingman me or whatever. He was like, no. Because she was, uh, let's just say she wasn't the most attractive female on the planet. Sure. Oddly shaped. But you still got to do your and job. And not attractive. I you mean, when I, tell you not, when I tell you not attractive, not attractive. It wasn't borderline not attractive. It was. Not attractive. Wicked Witch of the West E, but on really? a bigger frame. And she was cool. But boy, oh boy, like may have had a little bit of a mustache, Oof. like with a mole with the hair coming out of it, and heavy set and come on, short. I swear to God, it was all hair. this the mole hair, dude. The the mustache was a bit off putting. So I'm like, oh, and he was like, man, you, you know, shit, you gotta you gotta help a brother out. And he was like, hey man, shit, white woman is white woman to me. He was like, love white bitches. He was like, I got you, homeboy. I got this. I was like, all right, well, cool. Get over here and like integrate into this. And as long as everything's cool, come to find out. She loved the brothers. Oh. And I went, dude, right? right? This is awesome. So I'm like, cool. Working. This is my boy Rayvon. This is so-and-so. This is whatever, man. We got this and whatever. So he hops in the car with us, right? Gets in the car, and we're driving home. My buddy with the panic attack, he can't drive, right? So I've been, I've been barely drinking, right, because I plan on shenanigans. Right. So, I, man, I get in the car. Boom, boom, boom. I'm driving. You know, trying to make sure everything's cool. My buddy's, you know, he's like apologizing to me, like, man, sorry. And I'm like, I don't even want to talk to you right now. So I was like, You are on notice. I'll talk to Rayvon all day. I'm not talking to you. Rayvon is my dude. He is my new best friend. I don't even know you. So <laughs> we get to the house. We do whatever. We get in, divide and conquer, right? I take my girl this way. He takes the other girl this way, this and this. And that. So shenanigans ensue. This girl, when I tell you the most epic body and the most cool sexually, oh. I probably wasn't even ready coming out of – you never notice when you go through a divorce, even if you're the one who wants it and you're trying to end it and just the, the moving of your house and doing whatever. Psychologically, it messes with you, right? Right, 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 right. And I wasn't, I wasn't like trying to do this like, oh, I'm going to go out and pick up chicks and do whatever. It's just she was a really cool chick, and I went, right. I need to get back. I need to get the wheels moving and get back in the game. So I go ahead and do whatever, dude, the, the, the shenanigans, sex, and whatever was awesome. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, the original Guardians of the, Ga- Guardians of the Galaxy or whatever, mm-hmm. it was that movie. And okay. I'd never seen it before, and she was really liking it. So we kind of like had sex multiple times while watching it. Sure. And this, and she, you know, so you've never seen this before? Oh, and I'm like, God. no. And dude, it was cool. Dude, she had no hang-ups. No, not did all kinds of good shenanigans. So we do whatever. Um, we make it until it's got to be like by now it's like four in the morning right well and uh and i forget what had happened or no four or five in the morning that they're gonna go home they've got something to do and they need to get going or whatever. right 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 so that girl like you know ravon handled his business i noticed nice. because i went in i went to go take a whiz uh, and there was condom in the uh, condom in the toilet you know just you know casualties of war and whatever right, right. so i don't know what the moral of the story of this is but definitely throwing it out there and never saw her again Never saw it no, again. Never, never heard no, from her. No call. No nothing. No call. No show. Wow. I don't know, but when I tell you, finer than frog hair and whatever she was. Enough for my guy to multiple guys to try and cock block me, and then friend cock block me with man. You don't know what to do with that, dude. That little, right? You know, because dude, when I tell you she looked hotter than a two dollar pistol when we went over no there, shit. to like, <sighs> and she's East Side nineteen, which is a good twenty six. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And it wasn't like East Point good. It was Warren. Like right. Warrendale, Warren, like, like yeah, like, like eight mile and whatever. Like right. it, it was dirty Warren, which I never knew Warren was that dirty until I went to the east side and I was like, that's grimy. Hillbilly. It was what is it like eight mile and like eight mile and Ryan and shit like that, like over that away. White. Yeah, and white it's billy. like white Billy. It's like Brightmore times, you know. Brightmore. You know what I mean? It's just it's very weird. So. Yeah, I don't know, but it, it it helps, right? Throwing it out there works. Throwing it out there helps. So as a recap, we went over blue balls. 
and uh, and and other stuff. And you know, throw it out there. Make right. an impression. You have to. Yeah. Trust me, you have to. So hopefully by talking about this and the cute, you know, and look, the odds are she won't walk in here, but I'll be talking to someone at the front door, or, you know, sitting outside, you know, oh, wow, what a wonderful day. And if I see her, dude, I'm, You're in it. I'm going to just chicken pot pie. Right. Good girl. Church. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, bring up the odd, the, the oddest shit, too. They, they, they like, like off the wall random shit. They, they, they like to laugh at the off the wall funny shit. Yeah. I yeah. mean... When we when we were younger, we used to go over to Canada, and and talk a bunch of shit over there, and and that's where you that's where I practiced that was Canada. Is, yeah, get the because they're older, eighteen years of drink, go over there, and you could get loopy and still talk shit and, and practice your your, you know, in another country. I always went with really good looking dudes. Like my buddy, uh, you remember my buddy Robbie, the blonde hair, blue eyed. Uh, what's up, bro? Yeah, he I sounded like he was from California. Funny, yeah. Like, this dude could walk into a gas station and the chick clerk, and he'd be like, yeah, look at you, man. What's going on, pretty lady? What's <laughs> happening? And, you know, and he would go, yeah, you know, dude, you're sexy, bro. What are you working at a gas station for, right? right. Like, what are you doing? Well, you know, you got to admit, working working at the bar, if I could ever give anybody advice, if you're a, if you're a male, work at the bar, you could learn how girls react, how girls think, how they – Handle themselves. How do they think at the bar? Because you're behind, basically behind the scenes, observing, watching, and so you see this this Joe Schmo that comes up and he's the dancing guy or like the drinks guy, and then you'll see how that fails, and then you see who they go home with, right? Or, they go or home even alone. They, yeah, right. But but that's where I mean I bounced probably twenty years of my life bouncing bars, and that's where I learned a lot how to talk to women. Because you learn how what they want to talk about, what they, you know, it's bartending was the greatest. Oh my gosh! Because you'd see the dudes come up and do whatever, and then when they leave, you still got to hear the after story. Like, are you kidding me? Look at the shoe. That's where I learned exactly. girls in shoes. Like, psh, oh my god, I can't believe he's doing whatever. And dude, with shoes like that, like I'm gonna talk to you. I know like, one shoes? thing: girls do judge if you can dance and have rhythm. Then they relate that into sex. Of course, it's a correlation. I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's a no-brainer, but if they see some dork out there, they do. You will not go home. They they won't go home. With and them. you know, guys, like guys, we're all like, dude, I'm not gonna dance or I'm not doing whatever unless you have a chick, and then you're gonna dance right, with her, right, or whatever. right, right. But you know, when you do, there is something, and that's why the smiling technique. You have to look like you're having fun. Right. And if you do go out and dance, and even if you go out and uh, act, act do stupid. the robot. And but as long as you're making them laugh. They're, oh, my God, he's fun. And those things fun, subconsciously. That's, that's good. Because nobody wants to be with a dolty guy, right? No one wants to be with jealous guy. That's right. You know, they, 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 they you know, yeah, they, there's, there's, there's so many guys out there that have, they just approach everything wrong. Or the tough guy. Oh, yeah, Mr. Puffy Chest. And if you do, if you are the tough guy and you get the girl who's in, then there's like a 1% to 3%. There that is a like percentage that. of like that, yeah. But those are wacky, zany chicks. Yeah, those are the crazy bitches. Those are that crazy ones bitches. that like boil rabbits. Yeah, in and your, you, you know. want to avoid those. Yeah, that's Yeah, nah. those are not good. No, no. No, and it, and then and then it learn. I've seen guys crash and burn when there's groups of chicks where they go up and try to talk or try to, and it just doesn't work out. You just got to, I'm telling you, if I can ever get any advice, be a bar back, be a bartender, work, work him. You know that kid who was in here, yeah. whatever, he was working at, at like a chain grocery store, sure. right? And he's like, oh, and I was like, dude, you're going to school and whatever, right? No, he's like, no. I'm like, what are you doing with your life? Do you plan on working there forever, right? So I, after seeing him for a while and he comes in, he hangs out, asks me lots of, you know, a lot of questions. And after a while, I'm like, ah, he's a little awkward, but you know, whatever. But he's a good dude, right? So I'm like, dude, what are you doing with your life? I was like, in the, it just screwing off for the next four years. You're going to wake up four years later doing the same thing, working at the same place, doing whatever. And it's not your life stream. So start thinking about either what you're really good at or what you like doing. And I go, in the worst case scenario, take a couple classes. You know why? Because you're going to be around other people. You're going to be around girls in school. You're going to be around other people. Socialization is, is huge. Right. And I go, look, if you don't plan on staying, this isn't a career path that you're going to work for this chain company for the rest of your life, go somewhere more fun, right? 
because you can have fun at work. And I go, look, if you're working at a bar or a restaurant, right, there's always waitresses. There's always, you know, uh, hostesses. Patri- girls come in, customers. Any number of things, right? And you'll have fun. You've seen the movie Waiting, right? It's like a weird, you know, you work at a restaurant and the cooks and so-and-so, and then somebody will have an apartment. There'll be a party over there. And even if you're a dish Dude, dog, you'll still get invited. You'll still get invited. If you're a bar back, listen, you know how many parties I've gone to, after hours parties, or we've... I don't see, I don't know if they do it too much now, but partying after the bar's closed, mm-hmm. or hey, we're all going to such and such house, or you know, this week we're going over to this person's house. Oh, it's just it's a great way to s- socialize, and I don't know, just, and it and it plays well with your you know school work schedule, right? You can work around that. Obviously, you got to take earlier classes if you're working night, if you're cooking or dish dogging. Oh. But it's a it's a great life lesson, you know. Place. Oh, to, it's a very good life lesson to learn. I'm still friends. Outs. I'm still friends on a guy. I've got a. I've got a. Uh, and if Jeff, if you're watching this, I still have the scar. You see the scar on the palm? Yes. Like right there. Yeah. It's funny because I. He was like, "Man, I still, I still feel bad about X, Y, and Z." And I was like, "Holy crap!" I was like, "You remember that where they threw the? We were closing, and I was working, you know, this side, and they were asking me to help close this because we were going to a party or whatever, right? Sure. And oh, and I'm feeling, I'm cool. I'm part of the group and whatever, right? So he throws the saran wrap with the uh, serrated edge, and it was the industrial size, right? Not like the one you got, mom's got in the kitchen well, or right, we've got right. at the no, house. No, this is the one. This big hat. And didn't give me a heads up, right? Like, I'm, you know, I'm making sure this is good, and I'm doing whatever, and I'm putting lids on stuff, and I'm getting this area, and it's not my area, so I'm focused on it, right? Hey, heads up. I look, and I, you know, basically, whoop, football catch, right? right? Like, right. I almost, yo So I look, and I'm, whoop, I catch it, and it goes. It sawed your hand. And I'm like, what is this and whatever. And it's funny because I'm friends with him on Facebook still to this day after what? Uh, God, forever, right? Like 50 million years. Right. Then he, you know, mentions it. And I'm like, haha, from my old, you know, my old days of working in a restaurant. You know, funny you should say that making friends with the with people in the bar is is there there was this kid. He was he was a quiet kid, but big. We called him pear because he just his body type looked like a pear. And um, bigger, taller guy, and he was real reserved and quiet, but he was just a big dude. So we just stuck him in the middle and basically, you know, you know, totem pole types. So he he said, "Hey, my parents are out of town. Come on over." So he's 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 Jewish, one hundred percent Jewish. So we were uh, we were bouncing at a bar on Grand River where it split mm-hmm. over there in Farmington Hills, and and so we went to his house and they lived. In the same subdivision is Oakland Hills Golf Course. So you know that this person has money. That's right. Well, his dad owned land of several malls, and he sold them. And I remember that we went to this house. I mean, this guy, I don't even want to tell you. It's probably 8,000-square-foot house. He had a, a pool, olympic size indoor heated Olympic pool for a, a pool room. Then he had like a playroom where it had all these like ninja swords and golf club. And then he had an indoor basketball court indoor in the house. And and I just ridiculous. and I remember that we all went over there and just invaded everything. And th- they had a cook that cooked all this kosher Jewish food. And so alcohol and food didn't mix. And we basically devoured half of his kosher food because they were setting up for the Jewish holiday. Come on, never forget. I felt so bad. And then we had, uh, their, his dad had Fabergé eggs Oy. on the on his desk. Why and, is this like Ferris Bueller's day I'm off? If you guys you, stole the Porsche. He's like, you guys got to get out of this room. Don't touch the eggs. I mean, and these were, you know, if anybody knows what Fabergé eggs are, they're just eggs that are designed with a lot of money it's just one of those things and we just i just but what the point is is that we made so many good friends with that being you know friends or girls or connections you know we still know each other where there's still some people to hang out we still reminisce about oh my god remember back when we did this remember when johnny was on the pool you know a uh, pool table naked just stuff like that just this relationship and bonds but it also Gets you to where you talk to girls, you talk, you know, you, you get that relationship or guys, if you're a girl, you know, same thing. Waitresses came. I had a lot of friends that were waitresses. And you, you automatically get the ghetto pass because you work there. Right. Right. There was parties. You were going, you were doing something 
every night, no matter if you were the nerd barback boy or cool dick valet, whatever. Yeah. And that's the cool thing. It's all about association. If you work there, like imagine if you came, the, it's so weird. Like if you, like I came to this party with you and oh, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. I don't know him. Right? right. There's a whole, I know you factor. And if you're in the know, that's cool. You sometimes you can you can assimilate you know the oh I know Matt and whatever and you can assimilate into the group but generally if you work there and you're part of the whatever even if you were the nerd guy the dish dog the bar back the valet whatever it may be you could talk to the cool hot you know bartender chick and whatever hey what's up Johnny you know blah 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 and they would talk to you and you're because, like oh my god she's talking to me because you you know it's a lot like it's almost a lot like the military if you work in a high end restaurant well a high volume restaurant. Where shit gets hectic, I mean, dude, it's you ever go behind the door? It seems real neat where you're sitting out there and oh, mm, the steak is really good tonight, honey, right, and right, whatever. Right. You go in the back, get it up now. We've got fourteen million. Right, down. where's Same that? Same thing with the bar business. I mean, you're slanging beers and you're bar backing and shit's flowing. People, you know, bartenders are doing tricks with flames and shit. And yeah, you go back, you go downstairs. The bar backs flipping out. The managers yelling at X, Y, and Z. When you're up in front, <laughs> when you're in the front of the house. Hey, how's everyone going? You know, how's everything going? You know, everything will be fine or whatever. Go in the back. You know, dude, Fuck. just we ain't more cape. Where you at? Where I've you never going? I've never heard people speak so horribly to one another and then have your shift beer at the end and go, man, that was a rough was night. Fucking I know. tough. I, I, you do feel exhausted at the end of the night. And I guess that builds some random kinship because it does oh, take a it's team. A bro- it's a brotherhood. It's definitely a brother and sisterhood, you know, of of uh you know when you get older and stuff it's a life experiences well dude how dude this whole thing with me working at the landing strip right like he was like dude work the door but both of the managers worked behind the bar they were both bartending right right so there'd be two of them with one and maybe one would come out and do something on the floor but your whoever was the senior like the senior door guy or the one with his most chops other than the giant guy who I yeah. Need. yeah right right okay because we we would actually we would look if i'm if i'm setting people at the booth i need my booth to be clean so if it's busy and the waitresses are doing whatever and they're not paying attention i've got to seat this guy there's nobody coming in we've got earpieces i will go ahead and hey stay at the door for a minute i'll take a, a lap around i'll bust that table right i grab two beers grab this right. put the candle back do whatever take it drop it you know the waitress thanks a lot you know thanks i'm sorry i was like don't worry about it sister so when i'm coming in to seat somebody gentlemen how are we doing today we've got a ten dollar cover you know to the young lady at the right you got your ids pleasant right. gentlemen would you uh you care for a booth table bar seating today i don't know i've never been here before okay we've got booths we've got 10 booths surrounding the outside i do have a couple booths available for you um, we do have table setting. I will tell you, and we do have seating at the bar, right? Seating at the bar is first come, first serve. You never know who you're going to sit next to or whatever. But I will tell you that if you were looking for female companionship today and have some, the ladies like to sit in the booths. They're a little more comfortable. They, it's, you know, just comfy. Put, yeah, put your cheek in and you can easily get out with heels. So if you'd like female <laughs> companionship, the girls will come by and, you know, and sit with you and whatever. Do you care for a booth? Cool. Booths are 20 bucks. Thank you very much. Boom. Seat them in a booth. I don't wait for the waitress to bring them a menu. You gentlemen need a menu? This, right? So it was a it was a whole lot of and I did that because, you know, the stores were running good. Stores are doing fine. Right. They know I used to manage Bazooki and Lolita. Well, I used to work at Bazooki and managed, you know, Bazooki two, Lolitas. Sure. And Lolita. uh, and obviously the first the first strip club I ever worked at in life was was with you. Sunset Strip or Hard Shut Bodies. Up. Where you maybe you were like, dude, so That's when I was living right. in the South End, I just got back from Texas. And, and you're like, what the fuck, Redford? And and because no offense, the you I knew at sixteen, seventeen, you're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. You were actually kind of pushoverish, you know, not physically, but just you were a nice dude. I was nice. You were the last no guy conflict. I would have thought. I was not so nice, right? I was a little rough around the edges back then, and so I come back. I think I'm, I'm twenty one. That's right. I'm twenty one years old. I come back and I'm living in the south end of Dearborn. You somehow heard that I was back, and hey, what's going on? I was like, dude, I'm staying at Dixon, Wyoming. Yeah, I remember. And you're that. like, no, dude, I'm up here. Dude, do you need a job? And I was like, yeah, kind of. I mean, I'm putting out feelers. Sure. Dude, I got you and whatever. You've been working out, and I was like, of course, I'm in good shape right now. You're cool. Meet me, meet me over here. I show up. You're like, yeah, cool. Here's how it's gonna go. Um, <laughs> this is a pretty rough area. Um, you, you got a gun? And I'm like. <laughs> I'm 21. What would I have a gun for? You should really have a gun, but we'll work on that. Um, 
Here we go. Here's the metal detector. Go stand by the back door. You made me. I had to work in the. I had to work in the. Uh, in the back parking lot because it had a fenced-in parking lot. That's right. So I had to be back there, and we'd factor every like every two and a half hours. I'd go from there, rotate to the back door to the front door. Yeah. And metal detector and boop boop boop, and I'm like, yo, this dude's gotta go, <laughs> man. I ain't gonna do none, but you know the area. And I'm like, hey, man, I don't. Uh, hey, come here. Hey, buddy, you can't come in with that gun. Whatever. And dude, shenanigans, and then dudes at a booth. I remember a bunch of. I was like, dude, what? And I was like, what? I remember asking you, what are you doing? Like, dude, I thought I was gonna, you know, maybe, you know, tell a couple college kids to simmer down. We are in the. What was it? A hard. Hood. What was it? A hard body or it was, was it hard, Sunset well, Strip? It could have been both. I think it was both. It I was think, both. I, I worked at both. Yeah, and I think you brought me in for small <laughs> interims at both. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. That's the good part of not talking for a while because that was that was good. You brought me on. I'm like, "What are you doing?" There was only like three white people there. Oh yeah. Bartender. And then you and you, you were like, "Look, they DJ. really they really don't like enjoy like when you've got a it looked like a band of rappers in booths." <laughs> and you were like, "Hey man, they can't do that. You need to go tell them to stop." And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, dude, Just don't what, be scared. what did I do to you? Are you trying to get me shot? He was like, dude, we wanted everyone. Nobody has a gun. They would have to go out and get it and then come back <laughs> in. But hopefully the dude in the back won't let him back in. <laughs> I think he's got a gun. And I'm like, oh shit, I am 21. And it was my uncle, right? My uncle, uh, my Arabic uncle. Yes. Uh, you know, yes, he, I remember. And he, uh, one day he came up and he was like, you know, uh, he, he found out where I was working. I told him whatever. He came up and he went, he was like, Jacob, what are you, what are you doing? Do you need money? If you need money, you let me know. He was like, you're no longer working here. What is wrong with you? He was like, I've... Who do you know works here? He was like, I know people that are in here. My uncle was not a, right. you know, the no. shiniest dude. Right. He was like, Jacob, you don't want to be here. He was like, I know some of the people in here. You don't want to be here. He was like, come, you need money? You talk to your, you talk to your uncle. I've got you. That's you know, whatever. So and I was like, no, funny. I mean, but my buddy Matt, he was like, he'll be fine. He chose this. You don't need this. He's <laughs> he like, you come with me. This. We'll get you a job. And then I started working at... Uh, I started working at the the little place um, off Hicks that did uh, like steel case that they would take back steel cases, old uh, furniture stuff, and we would break it down and whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. you remember when uh, the, our good friend of ours that got killed in the car wreck? Sure. That was that whole time frame. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was because oh, I, had, right. I had worked with you, stopped working with you. I got a job at this place, and I was at that place for like maybe three or four months. So it was within that six to eight month period that I worked with you, came back from Texas, did whatever. Crazy shit. Crazy that shit. Six months. Yeah, God. A lot of, lot of stories. Come that out was of that. the most hood, just Michigan Avenue strip club in Detroit. It was, yeah. Teetering on the Detroit Dearborn border. Well, I remember I invited you guys down one night. Remember you guys come down, you were like, what are we doing here? You were, I was like, just don't be scared. Just come on in and just pretend that you. Own the joint. Yeah, act like you belong. That's right. Act like you belong. Yeah, that was... I know everybody else was frightened. For me, I've got a little more edge. I was like, look, there are some cats who are looking at us very... I mean, these are not nice dudes, right? When you got a... That was the first time I'd been somewhere where metal detecting and, and this and that. And, and then... Demographically? Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd been in areas, you know... Oh, well, right. But, but yeah, to be that... I remember I took a friend of mine down there one time I said, come on man we're, we're gonna go check we're gonna go it was like an off night i come in there i go through the front i bust right i don't give a fuck you know this is my place you know what i mean and they were like who in the f is this dude and then but everybody kind of knew who i was so they're like don't these fucking nuts Just well and don't the, don't say the, shit Just and the crazy me. thing is the guy i knew nice cheery jokey matt from redford is now hardcore like bouncer dude in the middle of whatever and seemed totally cool with it. <laughs> like just no sweat. Hey man, it's cool, man. I mean, if you hear gunshots, get down or whatever. Right. Most of them they get horrible aim, they shoot high. <laughs> you know, blah blah blah. It, it gets crazy around here. But we, you know, we wanted most of everyone. I mean, uh, we started wanting metal detecting at seven. So if anyone got in with a gun, they had to have been here from five. And right. I'm just like, what? What's happening? So did yeah. you wonder why the back and front doors were like out of thick steel? Oh yeah. <laughs> When I was standing the first time I had to, to work the back door, you know, I mean, when I worked the parking lot, right. that was one thing. But when I worked the back door, I was like, wow. That's a heavy door. That's a heavy door. And I was like, yeah, they got this whole parking lot fenced in and whatever. And I'm like, 
why in the hell am I, man, man this ain't the best of areas, man, but keep an eye out. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> and I'm an, I'm an observant dude and nervous right. to begin yeah. with. Like, what the hell? Yeah. So that was a, that was a fun, uh, that was a fun little, little snippet of, of whatever. Of yeah. History. yeah. That was some good times. Are those places, do they still exist or did, didn't Star one, Marvin's buy one Star of them? Star Marvin's, but he went to, I, I, yeah. you know, and then, um, then that place changed over. I just recently went down there for. I go down to Detroit for dinner because all the time. Because you can't get it out of your system, I guess. Right. No, well, I love going downtown to eat dinner. Anyways. Well, yeah. But uh, Diamonds and the place that when I was at uh, Hard Bodies is open. A good friend of mine uh, uh, works there, bounces there, but um, he's total SWAT, uh, ex Navy. This guy and has his own setup, and he's uh, you know pretty badass guy and. So he works at Hard Bodies, and then Sunset Trips closed down. I think. Yeah. Did you um, d- did you ever come down when I was uh when I was managing Lolita's Bazooki Two on Grand River and Griswold? Well, a matter of fact, do you, now it was me, Greek. Okay, so it was a bunch other of- people, and we were down there, and um, I remember we took the whole place over one night. Okay. And I just remember some girl doing a backflip off the stage onto the bar and i remember greek was doing the whole the make, make it, it rain, rain thing and, and yeah. he made it and basically the whole bar was it was up on its feet there was it was like i don't even know it was if you were to like like if you were to take a like a a bubble cloud or step out of your body and look down i just remember it looked like one concert party it was pretty See, and that's why amazing. you can't that's why you cannot tame the Greco. You've got to let he's like a Greek flavor flav. He got it. He's 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 a he's a hype guy. He is. He's a hype guy. I've had people at the landing strip say like, you know, the whole night and whatever. I've had, you know, my buddies managers they do they walk up put their arm around me and go, "Jake, I've had three people at the bar go, "Who is this great dude? Who is that guy?" Like Dude, that is the wildest, craziest. Like, he I, got, I'm at a strip club and I'm talking about like whatever. Mike, you got to bring this guy back. And he was like, dude, whenever Greco, because Greco lives on the east side, right, they're like, right. whenever he comes out here, I've got his bar tab. That dude makes the whole night better. He's insane, and that's what we love. Where others he, have said, he made like, it. He yeah, made, he, made he still that does. Night. Lolita's. I remember him making that. We were like, oh my god. I mean, the party was off the chain. Yeah. I mean, for sketchy as that place was it was it was it was fun yeah no that's how i got my that's how i got my my entrance into the beverage business because i took it from day one it was an old school shaker club right there was a lot man there's more drugs going over the counter than there oh, were for bars sure. so when i got over there they were like jacob this is what we want to do and they kind of tricked me i was fine at bazooki dude right. i was i met you know fernando rodney um the old center for the lions rayola sure. You know, well, that's you, how come I got in there a couple times because yeah. I just threw your name around. Yeah, no, dude, it was great, dude. I loved it. It was, you know, Bazooki was fine. It's in the it's nice fun. part of whatever. Have right? you been there recently? Um, when was the last time you've been there? They re- they, they revamped the whole. They, they thing. redid. Yeah, they took the uh, they took the pillars down on the bar, so the bar's wide open. They've Huge. got that beckon the second back room. But from what I hear, Legends is killing them. Dude, Legends, do you see the? We got to do a on our thing here. We got to do like a bar review because I heard because me and the missus we're going to go down for dinner one night i guess they got a big filet for 20 bucks like something that you would pay 30 bucks somewhere else or something or like 15 or something on a certain night and it's supposed to be killer food killer food it is and i'll give you my first interpretation of have you been there there? i've been there one time how, how was it one time um it was for uh a friend of the friend, my little Irish neighborhood, right? Like all APs, buddies and whatever. They were having a bachelor party. So play poker, did whatever, this and that. Then we were going down, going downtown. Sure. So we go downtown and they're like, oh, we're going to go, we go to go to Legends. And I was like, I've heard a lot about this place. I would advise you to go to Bazooki because I know people there. My buddy Jason was still managing. Um, I still knew people there. So I get good treatment. They always buy us a couple rounds of shots. I know the layout, whatever, but sure. they want to go to Legends. And I, I understand why. There's a lot of fanfare about it. So I go in there. And as we get into Legends, from the outside, looks like a normal looks little like, spot. Looks like St. Andrews. It's right next to St. Andrews, right? It looks like a St. Andrews. Bit so bit. I'm like, okay, eh, I don't know what this is all about. I get in. It's a Vegas-style club. Really? And they did it. Man, three floors. The top is all glass. So you're like in a giant fishbowl glass. Interesting, right? I never made it to the third floor, but I was looking at it from the second floor. The first floor is big and chaotic. And they pack people in like it's a disco or like a... 
like a crazy Vegas club, right? Yeah. And it's always packed. So we get in there and we're like, dude, you got any booths? We got a batch party. Oh, I don't know. Let me see. And customer service wasn't great. I mean, they got the job done, but it wasn't done with, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, hey, you know, they, we'll uh, take care of you. Right. It was, uh, dude, there's a booth. I got shit to just do. Go. And just ran off. And I was like, man, this guy. So we sit there. We have a booth. No girls are coming around, right? And I'm like, man, I see the girls on stage, but they're rotating from stage to stage to stage to stage. They've got like 18 stages like to hit. Right. So they're running. Like as soon as they get off stage, they're running, running, running. So you don't really see anything. So you see a few dancing on stage. There's a lot of guys standing around like they're at a normal bar, right? Standing, talking amongst themselves. Like, oh, look at that, man. She's hot. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And they go back to talking to themselves. And every, everyone there standing trying to look cool. Right, 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 right. And I'm like, it sinks in that I'm like, this is a surreal experience. Like, this is like totally not a strip club. It's like a, it's like, you know, when you go to clubs and they've got chicks dancing in cages. Sure, right, right. So I was like, it was, it was weird. I had a couple girls come over. I didn't know where they did dances, where the VIP room was, where this, nothing, right? Like, you, it, you, you, I don't know where they would have fit it because it seemed like every, I, I have no idea, right? So we were there, we did whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah. And everyone kind of came to the, wow, there's really no chicks coming around and we, we want to get so-and-so dances, but hey, can we get it? Oh, I, I'm, when I get off stage, never saw her again because- They just didn't have enough circulating in the crowd? I don't know if they did or didn't, or I don't know if it was an off night, but the whole layout of everything, it was not a place I would like to go. I would treat it like a normal bar. Like if It wasn't I was to- organized and have flow to it? Well, you know, you and I are a little bit different, right? We've been in the industry long enough that guys go there. They're going to have drinks and whatever, but they want to make time with the young ladies. Right. There was no time to make time. You could go up and tip them when they were on stage and you'd never see them again. You'd see them an hour later when they came back to do another stage rotation. So there were none that would come up and sit with you and do whatever. Or if they did, it was right. They were just starting and yeah, I'll come back. And then all I do was saw her run, 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 run. First floor, first floor, second floor, third floor, first floor. And I was like, dude, there's no time in between what's happening. So it's, it's a spectacle to see, but I think you'll get, it's, there's too much going on. Now, you know what I like is a single floor, a single floor strip club, maybe with a VIP upstairs or downstairs. Like a little bit of a... And the girls come up, you've got enough on the stage or a side stage, and then they've got enough time. Because I'm like, dude, they can't be giving dances here because they don't have time or there are no girls sitting at any don't table enough, right? or any booth or whatever. And I, I, it, was, it was odd. Um, and there were a lot of non, like, non-strip club veterans because – I saw a couple guys that I knew because, you know, from working at Landing sure. Strip and whatever, and I saw a couple of them, and they were there and whatever, had some drinks or whatever, and left. It's not a place where you go, you get a booth, you sit, you have some girls. You get some girls to sit with you. Maybe you, do you tip th- them or get dances or do whatever. It, it was very You don't weird. hang out. You just get there, have a couple of drinks. Oh, my God, that's cool. Go. You know who we made more time with and, and was, the, was the, the pinnacle of our night was our waitress. Really? Yeah, and she was really cool, really pretty. And, like, had a good girl quality and looked amazing, and she gave great customer service, and that was it. I would go back there to have her be my waitress. Wow. But I would leave and go to Bazooki. So I rallied everybody up. We got out, and we walked the, the three and a half blocks to sure. Bazooki right. and went in and had a great time finishing the night. Like, we had the last hour, and we had a blast. Right. That's crazy. That's cra- You know, like, like Flight Club. Flight Clubs, didn't they go, didn't, don't they gamble in the Flight Club now? No, I think they did back in the day, and that's why they got in trouble. Is that what it was? I don't know what happens now. Now, across the street. Yeah, somehow they keep on running. Yeah, no gambling there. Well, no, you're, gambling. you're gambling. You're gambling with, with a, a disease. Yeah, with your life. But, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes, call me crazy, man, but I like to, you know. I when like I worked to, there at Bogies, I, li- I, I made great money there. Yeah. I killed it. No, there's a lot of money killed it. there. People are spending killed it every now and again we like to go low rung like let's it's, just, it's a great adventure because you go there and you go ah look at this but what they do i don't know what's going on with the with the overall industry but dude you'll get three to four ringers in there right and they behave just like the other ones i, I was there with a lady friend of mine a while ago and uh there was a there's a girl that came that she was had way too much drink and way too many pills okay and she had uh she was she was just just slobbing around on stage she was like maybe a six six or seven but 
she was wasted and she kept saying oh i'm gonna talk to my agent you'll all see and then the dj started ripping on her <laughs> all over the loudspeaker saying you have no agent you're terrible but she was all like pilled out it was it was it was just a great to watch it was more like a people person watching thing other than you know well, one of these one of these days, you'll uh, yeah, it is a great people. Like you never know what you're gonna get, but no. oh my god, they have like four ringers there that you go there. I mean, yes, out of the twelve girls that are there, you've got three that are three that are good could work anywhere else. Right, two that three that started forever, first time, never danced before, and they're they're, they're trying. Uh, uh, I, I've well, always had that. I've always had the three that didn't that just they just like their first day. Then you have the veterans. The veteran, and then you have the high-profile ones that make the cash, and then then there's that two percent of ugliness, yeah, which they can't do nothing about. It's just yeah, the way it is. With there, you get you get so many that just you know those clubs, those you know in particular that that caliber of club. You get the chicks who are pregnant dancing. You get the <laughs> you get the you're 45 and still dancing. Like what? You get the I'm just why are you dancing? And then you've got four good ones, right? And sometimes. You've got the, man, if she's got enough time, if I can make time with her, cool, because she's the only good-looking one in here. Right, right. And not like good-looking by other club standards, but good-looking for what you're seeing. For what's at in front of you And then you've got like three that you just got to, you got to pretend that, you know, they're, man. There's something wrong. There's something, yeah. But like like a tooth missing or an ear. You know, it's one of those where you have to give up something. Yeah, an open wound on the shoulder. You got to give up something. Yeah. She's, she's got a pretty smile, but the stuff that's oozing out of her neck. You yeah, know, it's one of those things. A belly, like she's skinny all that way, but then has a fumpa. Right, like, or muffins, yeah, major just, muffins. And you're like, wait a minute, Every, or a flat ass. I hate like, the flat. From ass. here, from from belly button up, it's fine, but from there, it's whatever. Like, it's, like what happened? Yeah. One of these days, because you and your you and your girl do have a cool relationship, you should come with me to the landing strip and grab a bite to eat. We'll grab a bite to eat. You from a people watching and whatever, just to give your to give for you and for this sake that we can come in. We'll on do a, homework. It's we can come in on a, homework on a Monday and go. Holy oh. crap, dude! What have you done to this place, dude? I've been I've worked at many I haven't clubs been in one long time, but dude, the whole wait staff, right? I've hung out with the majority. What's the of other them. one? The the, what the other one on, by the airport playhouse yes D- um guy friend big guy doesn't work there no more right um no he's at subies okay he's down there yep so he's at subies big tony right saw him for the fight um the playhouse I is owned guy. the playhound is a playhouse is owned by subies subies owns yeah landing yeah. strip playhouse trumps subies trumps really mm-hmm. yeah i didn't know they got into that one yeah unless the one guy that i know sold it to him because i know that i knew the owner of trumps yep because he owned Cadillac cafe yeah it's the it's the other bars yep it's the same you know uh it's the same you know partnership that owns landing strip this and that but it's you know same gentleman from subies huh so yeah it's a uh, and i kind of try and keep it in the family right so sure. i stay at you know sister clubs and whatever sure. and when Hey, oh, you! I meet the manager of this club, and oh, you know Mike and Joe. Yeah, I work whatever. Oh, no kidding. The DJ that I that from Landing Strip may be working over there, and be like, Bink? Hey, we've got Big Jake. In you know, the house. little Bink, um, Jeremy, Bink. No, he we've... was managing at Playhouse. Little guy, short guy. Last I know, last winter he was. I don't know if he's there anymore, but I think um, he they had... had Alex Berry over at uh, Playhouse. All right, there was a guy named Bink that was at the Playhouse. He was managing and may have DJing. Been... May have been before, yeah, before then. It was in the wintertime because I know I went there because I was working at the airport and I would go there for dinner. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember going to the Playhouse in 90, you know, in the late 90s and, dude, it was in its heyday. Right. You know, and then when Big Tony was over there, it was good and Brandon and those guys. But, right. But, yeah, I'd like you, I'd like you to see <laughs> and then give your opinion of, holy crap, right, between the amount of dancers I know and hang out with, Wait staff I know hang out with the managers, the treatment, the whatever, and get your because you're an industry guy to go, well, holy crap, what have you done right. at this place? And you know, and give a and I'm I'm working on possibly when we were talking about, you know, marketing and everything. Because sure. it's the only place that, that we really go to anymore. Sure. That, you know, we we do a, a commercial forum, put a, a tag up, do something when, you know, when I was still calling the show The Bachelor Pad or whatever, sure. that we would, you know, hey, any listeners that want to, you know, 
if you want to do this and that with a bachelor pad, uh, well, we can get them. We can get them on there, right? I mean, yeah. we can we can yeah, work wave, the magic, wave their cover, do whatever. If somebody wants to have a bachelor party there, contact us. We'll go in. We'll make sure that you have a time. Make sure everyone knows you, because there's nothing worse than going to a brand new club and nobody knows you. You get treated like a nobody. When you go in and you know somebody, and you know it's people, way funner. And then, oh, you're friends with so and so and whatever. Then, oh, and all of a sudden, you become. You become someone in the know. That, yeah, for sure. So for sure. it's something I think Future I'm Future podcast. Do. Yeah, right? Mike was like, wow, why don't you come up here and do a podcast? I was like, there's no way that I that the sound will not disrupt whatever. There's no way. There's no. It would pick up. When I work much. there and I had the earbud mic and whatever, I can't hear what's going on, let alone, you I'm know. Sensitive mics. Exactly. So it's better to go there, have a fun night, and then recap it and do whatever. Right. So, and I've offered them to, if I do a deal with them, to have one of the managers come in or one of the staff come in, talk about X, Y, and Z, you know, push whatever new parties are coming up, yeah, the anniversary that. party and all That'd that. That'd be fun. Yeah. So cool. We'll go ahead and uh, we went, boy, we pulled some time on this one. We almost pulled two hours, bro. This is going to take a- crap. This, this one will be be chugging along to try and uh, upload by morning or whatever, but <laughs> I'll have all these uploaded uh, in the AM. But uh, this will conclude Jake, Matt from Redford, the jakepodcast.com. Jake Podcast. Dot com.